appeal hearing from May 24, 2022 is now in session. This hearing is being conducted in accordance with the applicable provisions of the open meeting law, including the updated provisions enacted by the legislature last year. The new law allows the board to continue its practice of holding virtual hearings until July 15, 2022. This hearing of the board is being held remotely via the Zoom webinar event platform. This, meeting, this hearing <clears throat> is also being live streamed. In order to ensure this hearing of the board is open to the public, members of the public may access this hearing through telephone and video conferencing. The information for connecting to this hearing is listed on today's hearing agenda, which is posted on the public notices pages of the city's website, boston.gov. Members of the public will enter the virtual hearing as attendees, which means you will not see yourself on the screen and you will be muted throughout unless administratively unmuted when asked to comment. Board members, applicants and their attorneys or representatives will participate in the hearing as panelists and they will appear alongside the presentation materials when speaking. Panelists are strongly encouraged to keep the video on while presenting to the board. As with our in-person meetings, comments and support will be followed by comments and opposition. The order of comments is as follows. Elected officials, representatives of elected officials, and members of the public. The chair may limit the number of people called upon to offer comment and the time for commenting as time constraints require. For that reason, the board prefers to hear from members of the public who are most impacted by a project that is those individuals closest to the project. If you wish to comment on an appeal, please click the raise hand button along the bottom of your screen in the Zoom webinar platform. Click it again and your hand should go down. When the ambassador sees your hand, you will receive a request to unmute yourself. Select yes and you should be able to talk. If you are connected to the hearing by telephone, please press star nine to raise and lower your hand. You must press star six to unmute yourself after you receive a request from the ambassador. Again, press star nine to raise your hand and star six to unmute yourself if you are connected to the hearing <coughs> by telephone. Those called upon to comment will be asked to state their name and address first and then can provide their comment. In the interest of time and to ensure that you have enough time to do so, please raise your hand as soon as Mr. Fortune reads the address into the record. Do not raise your hand before the relevant address is called or the meeting host will not know to call on you at the appropriate time. These instructions may be repeated throughout the hearing. Let's just take a quick roll call um, so we know who's on and the, um, Mr. Fortune. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, um, Mr. Ruggiero. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, uh, Mr. Arlick. Here. Ms. Dong. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, uh, Mr. Ligris. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good to see you. Um, Ms. Better. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Um, so, Mr. Fortune. Uh, oh, yes, uh, Mr. Hampton. Good morning, the Madam Chair. You don't have to worry about me. <laughs> okay, I'm not worried. Um, okay, uh, Mr. Fortune. Thank you, Madam Chair. The first order of business is the approval of the hearing <laughs> minutes of April 26th of 2022. We need a motion. A motion to approve the minutes. Okay. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries.
Madam Chair, the first extension is being withdrawn, so I'm going to call it in for the record. So case BOA 629-548185 Linden Street. Uh, we are been noted, notified by email that this be, is being withdrawn, so I'll make a motion to deny it without prejudice. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Calling the next case for extension, calling VOA 900 548 65 to 67 Border Street. Name and address for the record. Hi, my name is Lauren Shirtleff Cronin, uh, 6567 Border Street, East Boston. Thank you Just, very much, Ms. Shirtleff. Regarding 6567 Border Street, the board originally granted this relief on March 29th of 2019, and it would have expired on March 29th of 2021. But COVID tolling applies to this relief. With tolling, the relief expires on July 4th, 2022. I recommend that the board confirm for the record that the relief remains valid until that date. The applicant now also requests an additional extension until July 4th, 2023. I recommend that the board grant that additional extension if it determines that it is appropriate under the circumstances, noting that this would be the applicant's first extension. I'm Chair, um, motion to confirm that relief remains valid um, uh, with all applicable tolling through July 4th, 2022. And further move that uh, an extension uh, for relief uh, is granted through and including July 4th, 2023, which of course includes any and all applicable tolling. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Calling the next case for extension, calling VOA 917-193-18 Middleton Street. Name and address for the record, please. Alfred is on. One second, he has his hand raised. Um, Alfred, go ahead. I sent a request to unmute you. Uh, Alfred Kiranga, 18 Middleton Street, Dorchester, Massachusetts, 02124. Sorry, I'm going to mute there for a second, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Regarding 18 Middleton Street, the board originally granted this relief on January 31st of 2020, and it would have expired on January 31st of 2022. But COVID tolling applies to this relief. With tolling, the relief expires on May 8th, 2023. I recommend that the board confirm for the record that the relief remains valid until that date. Madam Chair, motion to confirm that relief remains valid um, through May 8th, 2023, inclusive of any and all applicable tolling. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Following your next case for board final arbiter, following case BOA 1176804, 15 Rocky Nook Terrace. Name and address for the record, please. I am Jeff Pfeiffer, uh, 15 Rocky Nook Terrace, Unit 3. Tell us why you're here, Mr. Pfeiffer. I'm sorry, say, say that again? Tell us why you're here, Mr. Pfeiffer. Absolutely. Um, so uh, we have been, I'm a homeowner. Uh, my partner, Molly, is here also on the call. And my architect, uh, Austin Drake, is also here. Um, we bought the unit in 2015. We've been living in Jamaica Plain uh, for about 11 years. Um, we had, when we bought the unit, known that it needed some upgrades, um, was what allowed us to purchase it, given how high prices are in the neighborhood. Um, we have a family, two children. Mr. Uh, Feifel, why yeah. specifically are you here today? Okay, sure, yep, I can tell you. Um, so we uh, were approved by the ZBA in uh, July of 2021 with the proviso that um, the pitch and scale of the dormer project uh, be reviewed by the Boston Planning and Development Agency. We've had, um, over the course of a number of months, had a number of meetings with them, um, and we um, sent in a, you know, a bunch of uh, stuff to apply for this final arbiter thing, so you should be able to see our correspondence with them and some of the meetings oh, we had. Are, are you guys at odds then? We are, yes. Okay, um, okay we, hold on. Hold on. Okay. Um, um, Ms. Better, did you have a chance to review the plans? Madam Chair, yes, I reviewed the plans and the correspondence. And um, do you have any thoughts? I'm sorry, were you directing the question to me? Ms. Better, do you have any thoughts? Um, so I was fine with leaving 
the width at one third of the roof i thought it was reasonable in terms of its size and the applicant did make a case structurally why it wasn't financially feasible to basically lower the dormer below the ridge and the applicant is meeting the seven and a half feet requirement of height so i also made an argument for the pitch at 512 performing better and if they were to lower it to the ridge size the lower to the ridge it would have not performed well in terms of shedding water so i i'm i'm okay removing that proviso okay may i have a motion then motion to approve removing the proviso a seconded ligris all those in favor so just to be clear madam chair excuse me um mr pfeiffer this board is that was me that was me christine okay go ahead i just want to make clear what proviso is it design review is being is being removed is the board now saying that dormers don't have to be no same as the ridge line i need to know from our shop what exactly is being got it so design review continues however um i think uh miss miss better clarify that we are okay with the pitch changing and the ridge line for this particular project it's not an across the board um decision okay i just wanted to make that clear because there are other cases that have this issue got it got it thank you okay was there a second to miss uh miss better's uh motion i second the secretary all those in favor all right any opposed motion carries calling an issue for final arbiter calling boa 1141860 32 richfield street name and address for the record please good morning madam chair members of the board attorney ryan spitz adams and marancy with the business address of 350 west broadway um this was a proposal that was approved for four units and six parking spaces by this board on february 2nd 2021 and the decision was signed off on on april 12th 2021 there was an appeal filed in superior court on april 23rd 2021 through the litigation process the owner and the plaintiffs have now agreed to resolve the litigation matter conditional upon changing the proposal from four units six parking spaces to two units with four parking spaces using the same footprint as proposed in the original proof set of plans uh the lot area is 5,675 square feet which is the existing condition we're in a sub district of a 2f 6,000 so mr spitz uh, why are you here so have what are the outstanding uh, violations that still hold because you're decreasing you're decreasing the unit count from four to two um so please tell us precisely okay okay so precisely the violations that will stand now would be lot width minimum frontage far and side yard um a lot of changes so the lot width currently is 40 feet on the left 50 feet on the right and the minimum frontage is 40 feet uh those didn't change from the original uh proof set of plans those will still remain existing FAR was decreased uh, from a 1.05 to now a 0.7. Building height stayed the same, except for stories. The stories was reduced to a 2.5, which is now zoning compliant. Um, open space, there's no open space requirements here, but the open space was increased from 1,008 square feet to 1,643 square feet. Mr. Uh, Spitz, you're throwing us off schedule here with your thoroughness so um so you're essentially requesting a change from four units and six parking to two units and four parking um um miss miss better have you had a chance to look at the plans yes madam chair and the plans are adequate may i have a motion please i'd like to put for a motion of approval what do we need design review with bpda design review yes is there a second Second. Second, Second. Ligris. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank Good you. luck. 
Calling the next case of GCAR, calling DOA 129-1749, 33-41, Bondsworth Street. This is a change of art from this 95,300 square foot building to include 47,966 square feet of research laboratory and use of 46,474 square feet of office used to remain. The corridor shell renovation to include new service elevator and the rooftop mechanical penthouse and upgrades to the rear loading area. The violation of Article 32, Section 32-4, this is GCAR. Name and address for the record, please. Morning, members of the board and Madam Chair. My name is David Linhart with Colston and Stores, 400 Atlantic Ave. And this project uh, at 3341 Farnsworth is uh, essentially uh, retenanting uh, an existing office building within the existing building envelope. It'll remain half office use and then uh, the other half will be converted to lab use. So Mr. Mr. Linhart, so the lab use, the research lab is an allowed use in the building? Yes. Okay, may I hear from Mr. Simonelli? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Christian Simonelli, Boston Groundwater Trust, and we have both letters from the applicant. Okay. We have them as well, Secretary. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Any opposed? Motion carries. Ms. Sillenhoff, the best part you. of your day. Appreciate it. Now I'm going to call the 930 hearings for any deferrals or withdrawals. You can give me the address first, please. So the 930 hearing for any deferrals or withdrawals. Hearing none, I'll call the first case, calling case BOA 131-8150-270 Summer Street. This is directed four-story addition to the rear decks, four-story addition to the rear and rear decks and change of art from a three to a four unit residential dwelling. The violation of Article 27G, this is in the East Boston iPod. Article 53, Section 56, off street loading is insufficient. Article 53, Section 56, off street parking and loading is, is insufficient. Article 53, Section 8, use and regulation. Article 53, Section 9, floor air ratio is excessive. Article 53, Section 9, the building height is excessive in story. Article 53, Section 9, the building height is excessive in feet. Article 53, Section 9, usable open space is insufficient. Article 53, Section 9, side yard is insufficient. And Article 53, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Richard Linz uh, with the business address of 245 Summer Street, East Boston. On behalf of the petitioner, Evandro De Silva, who is with us this morning. Uh, we can probably jump right to slide three on this just so we can get an idea of what the existing conditions look like. Uh, Madam Chair, this is a pre-existing non-conforming structure located at the Jeffries Point section of East Boston uh, on Summer Street closest to Maverick Square. Our proposal would uh, reprogram the entire building change the legal occupancy from three units to four units and propose a vertical addition as well as a rear addition uh, to change the living space uh, in the entire building. The units would consist of um, uh, uh, three three bedrooms and one two bedroom. Uh, the average size is about a thousand square feet per unit up to about 1100 square feet total. What we're looking at here is the rendering of the finished product, proposed finished product I would point out uh, and unfortunately, we have different architects uh, for the project immediately next door. Uh, but this is identical to the project, uh, to the building on the, on the immediate right of our building, uh, where we're uh, actually under construction for a similar proposal. We're not proposing any roof deck above the fourth level. So what we see is the stepped back fourth level with a front balcony only. Um, and the uh, layout of the units, if we jump down to, I believe, uh, page seven or eight, uh, that's the existing condition. And we can just jump one more existing condition, one more, there we go. So we're showing the um, uh, first floor basement plan, showing storage and utilities only, no living space. First floor would be a flat style unit, as well as uh, the same similar layout on the second floor. If we go to the next page, uh, we are uh, creating bi-level units on both the third uh, and the fourth for the third and fourth unit. So you would enter in the third level and have an internal stairwell to access the living area on the fourth level. As you can see from the addition, uh, we do scale the building in a bit to respect some of that side yard setback that presently exists. 
while the front portion of the building remains um, attached on both sides, uh, sort, of, sort of row house style, uh, we do uh, step the building in a bit to create a little bit of a setback in the back. By way of relief, uh, this is in the 3F2000 district. We do require relief for the additional unit as MFR is not permitted in this section of the neighborhood. Uh, we do have sufficient lot size at a little over 2,000 square feet, but would require relief for the additional dwelling unit that's being proposed. Uh, we do meet the minimum lot width and lot frontage, a little bit over 20 feet. Uh, our FAR is currently non-conforming at about a 1.25. We would be increasing that to 2.34. Uh, so a variance is necessary for that as well. Uh, increasing the height of the building um, allowable is 35 feet. We would be increasing that about seven feet to about a little over 42 feet, um, as well as the number of stories would go from three to four. Uh, we're not making any modification of the front of the building, so therefore the existing modal uh, would apply. Uh, we do require relief, however, for the side yard for the portion of the extension that uh, would be within the two and a half feet on the left side of the building. Uh, we do have a setback of about 1.8 feet at its closest point. So we are requiring a variance for that. Our rear yard, uh, although we don't abut another property directly behind us, we do have a, uh, a private way that's uh, about 12 feet in width, but our rear yard to our rear property line is measured at about 22 feet where the 30 foot required setback uh, is necessary. Uh, last but not least is parking. Um, Article 53 requires that you only are required to add parking for the additional unit being proposed. Uh, in this case, because this is a pre-existing condition with no parking, uh, we're only required to add one parking spot. Uh, I know consistent with the city's policy, even if we could create a curb cut uh, on this site, we would not be able to, uh, we, it wouldn't make much sense to add a one park, private parking spot uh, to the detriment of the surrounding neighborhood and on-street on parking that would be available. I'm happy to answer any questions, Madam Chair. Is it possible to have to add parking for the rear yard? Uh, there is access to the uh, back portion from Emmett Place, Madam Chair. Uh, we do uh, maintain that as open space and we will uh, continue with uh, creating a courtyard in the back. Uh, we, we could access the rear, however, we do that uh, while sacrificing some open space and there is, you know, at least a decent sized buffer between the back of our building and, and Emmett Place. How are the plans much better? And I'm sure their plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Yeah, um, the, there's an addition of a fourth story. Uh, in the rendering, it looks like it um, is higher than the neighboring buildings. And Mr. Lynch, you said that the one, the building on the right has the same uh, feature? That, that is correct uh, through the chair, Mr. Ehrlich. Um, this board approved the building next door at 272 uh, Maverick Street, coming up Sunder Street, is uh, of the same design. So it is a setback, fourth level, no roof deck. And this is also consistent with uh, 303 Sumner, 302 Sumner, 304 Sumner, 312 Sumner, and I believe there's one more on Sumner as well. So it's very consistent with the recent renovations that are occurring on uh, this housing stock. So this is zoning by appeal, Mr. Ehrlich. Um, is anybody here to speak in support by this uh, on this proposal? Yes. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, and Benitez with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office held an abutters meeting for this project on March 9, 2022. Uh, there were no abutters that attended, although we did receive three letters of support from Director Butters. The applicant met with the Jeffries Point Neighborhood Association in late 2021. The association voted in opposition with 10 residents in favor and 18 opposing. Those opposing felt that the building would be too tall and that, that they would, they should, there should not be a fourth floor. At this moment, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Um, just a quick question. Um, um, this, this vote was uh, made despite the fact that there were other such proposals on the street or other such construction on that street? So this go... No, no, yes, go ahead, no, 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 go ahead uh, from ONS, please. So this vote, so this vote was taken in 2021. So Lena Tremilli was here as a liaison back then. Um, considering that the neighbors do not like the height of the fourth floor, I would probably say that they said the same thing for every single project before them. 
Uh, give, thank you. Given that we've had a change at ONS, Mr. Lindsay, you want to summarize quickly? Sure, and, and thank you, Natalia, for, for adding that uh, information. So uh, I can attest to the board that there's been sort of a mixed reaction depending upon the Jeffrey's Point makeup, of, you know, the voting meeting makeup. Um, I, I think it's critical that direct abutters were in favor of this renovation. This building is in deplorable condition and needs upgrades. Uh, and we certainly expressed to them that we uh, are, are trying to maintain some of the character of the change and what's happening along that, that corridor. Um, so I think it's been sort of a mixed bag on what has been supported at Jeffrey's Point and what has been opposed. But in this particular case, especially that there's no roof deck, headhouse, et cetera, uh, this is pretty consistent with the building immediately to its right. I know that's not binding upon the zoning board, but Thank uh, you. just to give the board Thank you. an understanding Thank you. of where we're at. Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition? Madam Chair, Secretary, yeah. we do have the letters from um, that the mayor's office spoke of, the three support letters and one opposition. Uh, I do have a, the opposition letter is dated on, on April 26, 2022. Thank you. Um, anybody here from um, the um, city councilor's office, the district city councilor's office? I, I have reached out, uh, Madam Chair, with, with the plans. I, I'm not sure their office is weighing in yet. I'm, I, I didn't hear anything back. Thank you. Ms. Um, Ambassador? Yeah. I just. I have no raise hand. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Oh, Mr. Hampton. Sorry, Mr. Hampton. That's okay. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Jeff Hampton, Senior Zoning Planner. Uh, we recommend a denial without prejudice for the fourth floor addition. We've been consistent on our recommendations for the fourth story additions uh, along this stretch of Sumner Street, uh, especially while we're doing the Plan East Boston. So uh, to be consistent, our uh, recommendation is denial without prejudice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, given that information, may I have a motion, please? I'd like to put a motion forward of denial without prejudice. There are a second. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'm opposed. Mr. Ruggiero is opposed. Uh, motion carries. It's been denied without prejudice. Thank you. Calling next case, calling BOA 129-5945, 14th of 40 Beach Street. This is a change of art from an existing hair salon store to Cafe Dark Tea Shop. Violation Article 43, Section 19, takeout use, table is conditional. Name and address for the record, please. Hi, my name is Axel, I'm uh, Kathy Fan. We are the owners of uh, the long-term tenants of 40 Beach Street, uh, we like to uh, get approval to change the existing hair salon uh, into a coffee chocolate shop uh, on 40 Beach Street. And we need a change of occupancy for that. Okay, uh, so have you, do you have experience with uh, um, takeout use in the city of Boston? Yes, I've been the restaurant manager for the Marriott uh, Corporation, the hotel chain for 25 years, and I just retired uh, from that. And I used to manage uh, the Starbucks up in the Copley Mall uh, for the Marriott chain. Okay, so you do understand the takeout use, okay? Yeah. Um, how are the plans, Ms. Better? Madam Chair, the plans are adequate. Is anybody here to speak in support or in opposition of this proposal? Hi, good morning. Um, good, uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Chu Van Huang from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. And a mother's meeting was held by my office on April 4th, 2022. Um, this applicant has support from Chantown Neighborhood Council in addition to Chantown Main Street. Um, with that said, we will defer to the expertise of the board. Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board. Anna Calderon from Council President Sling's office. The councilor would like to go on recording support. Thank you. I'm trying to have no raised hands at the moment. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Motion to approve for this applicant only with the usual takeout language. Second. Um, do we need design review on signage or anything? 
Are, it, will there be, I assume? Yeah, I mean, any new signs will come to us anyway. Okay. So this applicant only in the usual takeout language. Is there a second? Yep. All second. those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set for that proviso, with those provisos. Thank you. Following the next case, following BOA 128 7865, 21 to 23 Greenville Street. <clears throat> this is a change of occupancy from an abandoned and boarded structure since 2015 to a nine unit affordable multifamily dwelling. This, is, this will be a total renovation in addition of a new rear egress stairway, a tower with roof penthouse, and an elimination of the existing fire escapes. Violations Article 50, Section 29, excessive FAR. Article 50, Section 29, insufficient open space per unit. Article 50, Section 29, insufficient rear yard setback. Article 50, Section 29, insufficient additional lot area per unit. Article 50, Section 43, Austri Park, insufficient. And Article 50, Section 26, the MFR used for bid in the residential subdistrict. Name and address for the record, please. My name is Rebecca Plout Mountner. I'm the director of real estate for the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Development Corporation, uh, which is uh, through our subsidiary, Lorenzo Vest Holdings, the owner of the parcel. Our business address is 31 Germania Street uh, in Jamaica Plain. Uh, we are a neighborhood-based group uh, based in Jamaica so, Plain. So, yes. so, Rebecca, we know exactly uh, what JPNDC does. Can Great. you get to the core of what's being proposed here? Sure, I'd like to move to slide eight, if we could, to just summarize the community process, and then I'll turn it over to our architect to explain the relief. We'd like to go directly to the pro uh, pro project to understand sure. the relief, understand the size of the units, um, and, and the, the core of this proposal. Terrific. I'll turn it over to uh, Fernando Dominetra, our architect. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, uh, members uh, of the board, uh, Fernando Domenech, DHK Architects at 54 Canal Street. Uh, we're here looking for relief on uh, the listed number of issues that were, was raised uh, uh, at the beginning of uh, the introduction of the project. Uh, this is an existing building uh, that, uh, until it had a not permit in 2015, how 17 units were so, looking at. So, so um, Architect Dominic, can you please go ahead and tell us about the size of the units, um, the number of bedrooms, all the stuff that's important to us as the Board of Appeal. Yes. Okay. There, and there. then walk through the violations, what's required and what's being proposed. The uh, project entails nine dwelling units, three three bedrooms, three two bedrooms, and three one bedroom units, all in accordance with the requirements of DND for size, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> we're preserving the exterior of the building. Uh, we're preserving the, um, the, uh, the, the, the building envelope. We're adding an egress stair to the back of the unit. In fact, if you show me the previous slide, and no, the one bef before before that. This this actually illustrates you on an, an, an existing non-conforming building in in the in the red line, and it shows you in the blue line how we're mo modifying the perimeter of the building. So a series of these um, require uh, of these uh, uh, relief uh, issues are uh, are really essentially pre-existing uh, non-conforming uh, situation. We need. Uh, we have excessive FAR. Um, uh, we have, uh, so tell us about the uh, rear yard, um, because it looks like you're adding a, um, a storage facility in the rear. The, um, can you tell us what the violation, what's required under zoning, and what would be proposed under this? Yes. Uh, under zoning, we're required a 30-foot rear uh, uh, backyard. This addition, which includes the, the egress stairs from the uh, you know, third floor all the way down to grade, also includes a one-story element that uh, is an enclosure for uh, trash containment uh, and, and, and the like. Uh, that was a direct response to the neighbor's request and concerns about it. So hold on, hold on, hold on, Rebecca. Please let um, uh, um, Dominic, Mr. Do Mr. Dominic proceed. Uh, what is the, um, and what is required? And what are you proposing? What's the rear yard proposed? We're, we're proposing a 20-foot rear yard. 
20 feet, okay? Um, and so um, I'm sorry, so the, um, so the bedroom, are, the bedrooms are meeting um, the affordable unit. Tell us about the penthouse. Uh, the, actually, the, the, the penthouse is essentially the, an extension of the stairwell to get uh, one up to the roof, uh, and then that, that, that's all that we're, that's all that's doing. That's that, the so-called penthouse. Okay, and is there any occupancy in the basement? No, there's none. Okay, um, and tell us um, what is, um, Rebecca, can you please tell us what the target uh, uh, residential population is? What, what uh, AMI? Um, this will be uh, 80 to 120 percent AMI. This we originally planned to do rental, but in response to requests from the neighbors, we have converted it to a home ownership project. Okay. Oh. And um, are any of these units handicapped accessible? First floor units are accessible, yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, how are the plans, Ms. Better? Madam Chair, the plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is Jason Gant from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. While we are not going to be making a formal decision on this matter, we'll be deferring to the expertise of the board. I do want to highlight the extensive community process that the applicant has gone through and also highlight the support letter from Roxbury Path Forward that should have been sent to the board yesterday. Thank you. Hey, Madam Chair, I do have one raised hand related to our testimony. And, and please, if anybody's here to speak in opposition, raise your hand too. Uh, Lorraine, go ahead. Hi, this is Lorraine Payne Wheeler, and I'm calling on behalf of Roxbury Path Forward Neighborhood Association. Uh, my address is 85 Moreland Street, and we did meet with um, the um, group from uh, JPNDC, and um, we did ask about the trash, as a matter of fact. And um, so we're very happy that they are renovating the building, and we did um, insist upon home ownership units for reasons that I'm sure the chair of the board uh, knows. Um, things that are happening in Roxbury in terms of affordability. And the last thing that I will say is that we didn't actually see a copy of the final plan. So um, if possible, if the board can ask for um, the Landmarks Commission and also BPDA design review um, for those um, elements that we didn't really see. Thank you. I'd just like to uh, apologize. I we understood we had sent everything to the neighbors. We're obviously happy to resend it and work throughout the process. Got it. Um, is this a historic district? Yes, actually the JPNDC worked to create this historic district and- uh, Oh, right, oh, because yes. there was a lot of confusion in the community about that. I remember that now. Yeah. Okay, um, given all that, Ms. Ambassador, anybody else uh, with a oh, raised no. hand? No, ma'am, thank you. May I have a motion, please? Uh, Motion to approve with design review. Is there a second? Um, can we just say specifically on the choice of the exterior material to be complementary with the masonry? Yeah, exterior yeah. material. Is there, is, is all those in favor? Can, may right. I just ask that no, there no, is no, 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 please. Um, so the- Madam no, Chair, I'll second the motion, um, oh. subject to BPDA design review um, oh. with specific attention to uh, exterior materials and masonry. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Calling the next case, <clears throat> calling BOA 1295586, 27 to 29 Browning Avenue. This directs new two family dwelling on a vacant lot. This is a DND project. Violation Article 60, Section 9, the lot area is insufficient. Article 60, Section 41, conformity with an existing building alignment. Name and address for the record, please. Madam Chair, I have Madam to recuse Chair. myself. Um, Ms. Uh, Ms. Barraza, do you have to recuse yourself on the next one too? Yes. Thank okay. You. 
Madam Chair, to that point, the next one, that they technically are companion cases because they're part of the same scattered site, so I'm not sure if the board would like to agree um, for the record together. Or no, I can do that. They just weren't um, put together. No, actually, they're in different wards, so we would need to do them separately. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you very much. Well, good morning once again, Madam Chair, members of the board. Attorney Matt Eckel with Drago and Toscano with a business address of 11 Beacon Street. Uh, also present this morning are Dwayne Boyce from Norfolk Design and Construction, Chris Drew from 686 Architects, and Kirsten Studian from the Mayor's Office of Housing. Uh, we are proposing at 27 Browning Ave to erect a new two-family home on a vacant lot. Uh, this is part of the uh, Neighborhood Homes Initiative, so this project is being conducted in association with the Mayor's Office of Housing. So, uh, tell unit us, so tell us directly about the existing building alignment. So as you can see right, right, right there on that page, Madam Chair, we, we are close. There's officially not really an existing building alignment. Most of the buildings along this street and, and along the next street, when we get to that one, are between about 10 and 20 feet. So we are proposing a, um, a setback of 18 feet, uh, which is right around the average. It's just not official. Okay. And this is um, the, um, the usual design from D&D, the prototype that they have? That's correct. It's, it's fairly similar. It, it is a two family. So we're proposing unit one to be on the first floor, be about 670 square foot unit with two bedrooms, one bath. And as you can see there on the site plan, a, a rear deck as well as a front porch. Uh, unit two would be located on the second and third floor, all told just over 1400 square feet at 14 and 1423 square feet. Uh, the second floor would have one bathroom, the majority of the living space, as well as a front and rear deck. And then the third floor would be the upper level of unit two with three bedrooms and one bath. Okay, how would the plants miss better? Um, as better as recused I, 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 I'm so sorry, uh, uh, Mr. Ehrlich. Uh, the plants are fine. Um, they're straightforward, slab on grade, and uh, they're fine. Okay, is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Is anybody here to speak in opposition? Morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Denise Mintles here from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. I would like to go on record and state that the applicant has completed the community process. They had an abutters meeting and met with the association to meet with the needs of the community. At this time, we would like to defer all the board. Thank you. Uh, BJ, I can see your raised hand. Um, BJ is from the counselor's office. BJ, go ahead. I sent a request to unmute you. Hi, BJ Oswaga so call. BJ Oswaga so from the District Four City Council's office. Uh, we are going want to go on record in support of this project. Thank you. Thank you. I have no additional raised hands, Madam Chair. Thank you. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve with BPDA design review. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Calling the next case, calling VOA 129558 29 Bradley Street. This erected new one family dwelling on a vacant lot for violations, Article 65, Section 42, conforming with an existing building alignment, and Article 65, Section 9. The lot area is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning once again, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Matt Eckel with Drago and Toscano with the business address of 11 Beacon Street. Once again, joined, uh, joined with Mayor Dwayne Boyce, Chris Drew, and Kirsten Studian. Uh, as mentioned, we're seeking to erect a single family home here on a vacant lot. This is part of the same uh, Scattered Sites Neighborhood Homes Initiative. Uh, this is located in a 2F5000 uh, zoning subdistrict. Uh, two violations noted again are conformity with existing building alignment. Uh, similar situation to the last case, you can see there how we do essentially line up with our uh, butter. We're proposing a 15 foot setback to the deck and then actually a 21 foot setback to the actual uh, where the structure actually begins as housing. Uh, in terms of the layout here, we are proposing a, a single family home, about 18,000, uh, excuse me, 1800 square feet. Uh, the first floor would contain the living area with a half bath and a rear deck. The second floor would contain three bedrooms and one bathroom. And then the proposed third floor is really just unfinished attic space. Uh, with that, I'll pause and take any questions or comments from the board. 
How are the plans, Miss Better? <laughs> uh, once again. No, uh, I'm so sorry. I, I was in that mode of Mr. Bizzani, you remember, for the longest time. So, Mr. Ehrlich, how are the plans? <laughs> the, uh, the plans are fine. Similar, similar slab on grade design. Uh, is anybody here to speak in support or in opposition of this proposal? Morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Denise DeSantos from Office of Mayor's Office of Mayor's Neighborhood Services. The the applicant has met with the community a few times as well around this project and they met with the director butters. Our office would like to defer any questions to the board at this time. And Madam Chair, oh, I do have one raised hand. Oh, PJ. Uh, Sorry, you want you to be Jim. Go ahead. There you go. Hi, thank you. Uh, the Barnes from the District for City Council's office. Thank you, Chair. Um, the District for City Council's office wants to go on record uh, for support of this project. Thank you. Thank you. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. BPDA design review. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Calling the next case, calling VLA 1285851, 131 to Ponson Valley Parkway. This is the demolition of an existing two family dwelling that spans two parcels under common ownership in a 2F5000 subdistrict, the Hyde Park neighborhood zone. This is a combined parcel that proposed to construct a four unit multi family residential. The violations Article 69, Section 9, insufficient open space. Article 69, Section 8, a multi family dwelling use is forbidden. And Article 29, Section 4, this is be broad applicability. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chairman and members of the board. Uh, my name is Nicole Dunphy with High Point Engineering. Uh, address is 980 Washington Street, Suite 216 in Dedham, Massachusetts. I am here with the applicant, Yvonne Bouquet, his son, Mark Bouquet, and the architect, Jonah Manigat. Um, yeah. 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 So, uh, please, uh, please just uh, describe to us what is being proposed. So, and um, there's an existing two family home that exists on the property. There's actually two lots. The first lot um, abutting the Ponce Valley Parkway is an existing non conforming lot. There's um, a lot directly behind it um, that's an existing conforming lot um, in excess of 5,000 square feet. The project proposes to combine the lots as one because they are in common ownership, um, tear down the two family home that was recently damaged by fire, um, construct a 2,000 square foot footprint with four residential units, two on each floor. Um, we're also proposing to provide um, eight zoning compliant off street parking spaces in the rear of the property. Um, some landscape improvements. So uh, let's tell us about the, um, the first of all, are these going to, lots going to be combined at, um, at the Suffolk County Registry of Deeds or are you proposing to hold them separately? I think we'll propose to hold them separately as they currently are um, and then to construct the building. Uh, the current building spans the two property lines so uh, will there be cross easements for parking? Um, if they're under the same ownership, so I don't know. No, but, but we always think about this building hopefully will be around for 50 years. Yeah, and it um, should it be sold, we want to make sure that future residents are protected. So, so, so um, that's something to think about. Give yeah. us a breakdown on the units, how many bedrooms, how many square feet. Sure. So the units, uh, the 40 units are approximately um, 900 square feet in area. Um, each unit will have two bathrooms and two bedrooms with a living area, kitchen area, um, in-unit laundry, and there'll be a finished basement for storage. And is there any proposed attic use? There is not. Okay. How are the plans, Ms. Better? Madam Chair, the plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support uh, or opposition of this proposal? 
Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, this is Danielle Fonseca with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. I host another butters meeting for the applicants on February 23rd of 2022. And during this meeting, there was no opposition that was expressed. Uh, direct to butters who live on Albemarle Courtside, uh, which is to the back left of the property, I believe if you're looking at the Neponset Valley um, side, stated they would like to see the inclusion of trees or fencing that would create more privacy, uh, where the applicants mentioned they'd be putting a grass strip at their property line and where uh, 131 to Pontage Driveway is being proposed. Uh, the applicants presented to the Reedville Watch neighborhood uh, group, um, and this was on March 21st. And with the exception of one person who indicated they would like to see more green space, everyone in attendance was in support of this initiative. Um, we have received 22 letters of non-opposition for this project, uh, which have also been sent to the board for review. And at this time, we would like to defer to the board for judgment. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Jordan Frias here from Councilor Ricardo Arroyo's office. We want to go on record in support of this proposal. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary here. We do have support letters. Can, Can you hear me, everybody? Yeah, go ahead, Richard. Can you state your name and address for the record? Hi, my name is Richard Gianangelo, and I live directly on 21 Wattle Street, which is next door to 131. And, uh, I'm a complete support of the program, and my neighbor, who's actually his backyard, is the rest of uh, 131 to Ponce and Valley's Parkway's uh, land. He's impartial to it. I spoke to him. He says he don't care what they do. He, he doesn't have any opposition to it. And um, one other thing is, uh, I think there was a, a, a neighbor or a butter that was making phone calls to the city about the automobiles and the cupboard. He was an absentee landlord, but that's something okay. else. No, no, I really. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Madam Chair, I have no additional raised hands at the moment. Okay, so this is also Greenbelt Protection Overlay District on the Ponset Valley Parkway. Um, so the green space will be an important element of any design or any approval. So may I have a motion? Um, uh, um, Jeff, did you have anything to go on the record with? Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Jeff Hampton, VPDA. Uh, we recommended uh, approval with proviso. We want to take a look at the parking layout. And also, because it is in a, a green belt, they're going to have to go to parks for design review as well. Um, but we are in favor of the project. It's just uh, I think we want to add some screening and buffering to that back parking area. Thank, thank you. you. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with a proviso to review the parking and to add screening and also to add pervious pavement. Pervious pavement, okay. Is there a second? A second, that ligris. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, good luck. Thank you very much. Calling your next case, calling DOA 136296, 36 Rodkin Road. This is a renovated one family home by expanding the existing first and second story living space, removing the existing rear deck, and erecting a new rear deck. The home will remain a one family. Violation of Article 67, Section 9. Side <coughs> yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Kevin Cloutier from the Cloutier Law Firm, located at 1990 Center Street in West Roxbury. And I'm joined by the uh, homeowner and applicant, uh, Michelle Scale. And what we are asking this board uh, to do is to allow a, a grant of variance for one violation, which would be a side yard setback violation. What the Scales are um, looking to do is to expand their existing single family home uh, to accommodate their family. Uh, Gerard and Michelle Scahill, uh, both born and raised in Boston, have four children ages currently 11 to five and they're just seeking to make their home uh, a little bit bigger uh, to accommodate that family. Uh, as I stated, the violation so, actually, if you can so, see right, okay, so, yeah. hard. so tell me what the total square foot addition is proposed to be. Thank you, at the end of the day, it's gonna be 1,920 square feet. That's an additional 600 square feet from the existing 1,320 square feet. So they're adding 600 square feet, okay? Correct. And tell us what the side yard is required and what is being proposed. Right, the requirement is uh, 10 feet uh, on that side that we see right here on the slide. 
and the existing is six feet six inches and the violation and so that's a pre-existing non-conforming condition and the violation is triggered because the uh, renovation calls for extending that side wall um, and it's going to extend out uh, it's currently a, a 31 foot seven inch wall the extension is going to bring it to 38 feet uh, so okay. it's basically enlarging that non-conforming okay. uh, setback miss better how are the plans i'm sure the plans are adequate any questions from the board is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal good morning madam chair and members of the board my name is uja nochi and i am from the mayor's office of neighborhood services um for 36 rapkin road they did get in contact with their neighborhood organization um sorry they got in contact with the neighborhood organization um lana and there weren't that many concerns. It was just regarding the leveling of the backyard, but that will be staying the same. And we did receive about 11 letters of support for this project. Thank you. Madam Chair, sec Secretary here, sorry, Jessica. Uh, we have letters of support as well. Uh, may I have a moment? Uh, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, City Council at large, Michael Flaherty. Um, Jerry and Michelle are uh, the great Parkway family and the council would like to go on record and support. Thank you. All right, I'd like to make a motion to approve. Uh, with design review? It's a, um, rare, it's a rare edition. Um, that's what the BP, uh, let's see, the BPDA has re uh, recommended uh, design review. Sure, design review. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling DOA 1080 to 34 Orkney Road. This is seeking to combine two lots, create one new 4,965 square foot lot to be known as 3234 Orkney Road. Also change the occupancy from a two family dwelling to a one to to a seven-unit dwelling and renovate, including a one-story addition above the existing two. The violation of Article 51, Section 9, is sufficient lot area per unit. Article 51, Section 9, excessive FAR. Article 51, Section 9, the maximum allowed height has been exceeded. Article 51, Section 9, insufficient rear yard setback. Article 51, Section 9, insufficient side yard setback. And Article 51, Section 56, off-street parking and loading is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Thank you, Madam, Madam Chair. Chair. Sorry, Councillor. Madam Chair, I need to recuse myself from this matter and the next one. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. So, Attorney Jack, um, so, um, let's see, I, um, Councillor, so I need to t inform you that this is a six member board and you need five members in support. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we'll, we will go forward. Uh, Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago and Toscano with the business address of 11 Beacon Street. Um, here on behalf of the applicant and with me I also have Adam Glassman who's the architect on the project. Um, I just want to note the description has actually changed from what was read. Um, the proposal is to combine the two lots and to change the occupancy from two existing two family residential buildings um, to a seven unit residential building with a one story recessed addition on the top floor. Uh, this will also include a full renovation of the building. We are proposing to add the three additional units on the top floor. That picture is actually great if we can leave that for a minute. So adding up one floor to match us lower, but to the buildings to the right of us, um, and then one floor in the lower level that is over 95% above grade. This particular zoning district is an MFR. Our lot size is 5,145 square feet. And this Look, does- I'm sorry, it says 4,965? I'm sorry, Madam Chair? No, it's four, sorry, what is it, 5,000? It's 5,145 square feet for the two buildings. Okay. This also right. does fall in the Aberdeen Historical District. We worked with uh, the Conservation Commission throughout uh, this project. Um, just to go over the, the plans uh, that are shown, 
Um, so lower level has would house unit one. That is a two bedroom, two bath uh, unit at 1,215 square feet. It has eight foot ceiling height, three means of egress through the front of the building, through the side of the building, and through the rear of the building. Um, on the other side, which is now 34, that would just be a gym and storage space for the building. Uh, going up to the first level, that would house units two and three. That would be, those would be two bedroom, two bath units with rear decks at 1,310 square feet and 1,425 square feet. Going up to the second floor would house units four and five. Those would both be two bedroom, two bath units at 1,420 and 1,430 square feet with rear decks. Um, going up to the third floor that has a recessed 12 foot pullback on our addition that would house units six and seven. Those are two bed, two bath at 1,050 square feet and 1,040 square feet. They have a front and rear deck where those uh, where that's pulled in. And just to note, uh, right now the bedroom count of this building is 17. So it's sort of a hodgepodge of bedrooms throughout those four units. We would be lowering the bedroom count to 14, and this would become a condominium building. So 14 bedrooms, and this would be a condo. Tell right. us about the parking. There is no parking currently, and since we're keeping the building structures, there's no ability to create parking. But as I mentioned, we are lowering the, the unit count. How are the plans, Ms. Better? Madam Chair, the plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Uh, just a comment, nine units, just uh, avoiding the affordable. Uh, um, no, no, they, no, they no, reduced no. it to seven now, Mr. Ehrlich. Okay. Okay. Seven units. It's, it's um, and, and this is City Realty again? This is City Realty, yes. Okay. Um, any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition? Yes. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer judgment to the board for some background information on the community process. It was a long, spirited one. Uh, the last of butters being Butters meeting our office held was December 7th, 2020. Uh, since then, the applicant was working with neighbors to try to address some of their concerns. Uh, they made the switch to go home ownership with condominiums. And a number of residents uh, felt that that addressed any concerns they may have and looking forward to seeing more home, owner home ownership opportunities for that particular neighborhood. Uh, however, there still remain a couple of neighbors that were concerned about um, just what they felt was a lot of density and potential on a very narrow street to have uh, a lot of turnover. Thank you. Oh, they also went to the, sorry, they went to the right. Madam Chair, Secretary, yeah, we do have those letters that the mayor's office spoke of. We do have the opposition as well. And uh, they went to the Brighton Alston Improvement Association and received their support. Thank you. I do have a few raised hands. Um, I'll start with Ed. I sent a request to unmute you. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Hi, I'm Ed Redenberg, and I live at 31 Orkney Road. I live right across the street from this property. Um, I had a couple questions specifically um, from this presentation. He said the basement level had three Excuse egresses. Excuse me. Um, at this moment in time, um, there are no questions. We just need to know whether you're in support or in opposition. All vetting should have occurred at the community level, and we trust that the applicant will be in touch with the community. I wasn't in. Oh, sorry. I, I wasn't invited to any of these uh, meetings. I'm an, a butter. So, okay, so given what you've heard on this presentation um, and that they, in fact, have worked with the community, um, tell us what your thoughts are, or maybe at this point you may, um, you may not want to go on record either in support or in opposition. <laughs> Oh, I'd, I'd like to go on record as being opposed to this. Um, I, I wasn't uh, invited to uh, express my uh, opinions on it uh, during these abutter meetings that they mentioned. Um, and the, the project has changed as well. Um, what was presented to me last year um, was much different. There weren't roof decks. I mean, it's a college area, so having a roof deck is sort of a recipe of, of you know, for, for accident, you know. Um, but right. yeah, this, this plan is completely Thank different. And Thank you. Eva, go ahead. You've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? 
Yes, hello. Uh, I am um, at 15 Orkney Road, uh, so right on the street, and I see the project from my windows. I'm in the butter. Um, uh, I have been a long time neighborhood activist, and I am generally opposed to rooftop additions, but in this case, I um, have to say that the developer has worked closely with the abutters to make sure that the addition is properly designed. And although we are reluctant to accept something like this, and we hope that the CPA will not um, allow rooftop additions in our neighborhood on, on those older homes, um, uh, this, this property is so run down that I believe that the only way to actually um, uh, save it and, and make it uh, useful to the neighborhood, it's a nice building, is to have a nicely designed rooftop addition. However, the application for this project describes the earlier version of this project, and it doesn't mention the promise that this is going to be majority owner-occupied condos. So I'm very concerned, and my neighbors are as well, that if they get approval for this project, they can simply flip it and sell it to another developer who will not keep promises to, to, to the abouters. So I, I would very much like a proviso to be added to, to this uh, approval stating, uh, reiterating really their promise that this is going to be a majority owner-occupied condo because there is no room for Thank constant you. Thank you. Thank moving you, in Webster. and out. Thank you, Ms. Webster. Um, anybody else? Yes. Uh, um, yes, Brian Bailey. Um, I'm a butter at 36 Orkney. I'm speaking in objection to the project. Um, yeah, I, this the fact that it's changed is news to me, and um, the roof deck, yeah, it seems like a recipe for disaster. And I've seen pictures of the building, and they're, they're beautiful apartments, and I don't see any reason to uh, tear it up at this point. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, Madam okay. Chairs, yeah. oh, ahead, Madam Chair, go. members of the board, Annabelle from the Brighton Austin Improvement Association. Um, there, this project has gone uh, through yes. a lot of changes. They've worked with the neighbors. They've come to the BIA several times, and um, we voted to support it because it has gone to owner uh, owner occupancy. Uh, the attorney has uh, expressed that he will put it into the condo documents, the seventy percent owner occupancy, and we do. Uh, like the fact that it is being changed from a rental building to home ownership and the roof deck should not be a problem with home ownership at 70 percent so we voted to approve it thank you thank you and i have one more hand raised um beatrice go ahead yes uh i would like to say that i'm okay with the project as Can long you name your address for the record please as long as it is a major owner occupied condo. Yes, I want to stick that that's in the address for the record. Hello? Yeah? Okay. Can you state your name and address? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I basically um I'm okay with the development. Sorry, uh, Miss Miss uh, can you put your name and address on the record for us please? Where do I put that? Because Just I state, left... state state it for the okay. record. Thomas, 84 at Gunwood Avenue. I can see the building. I'm sorry, my... your address again? 84 Englewood Avenue. Got it, thank you. Okay. And we, we, okay. have your, we have your uh, testimony on the record. So given that okay. information, um, may I have that. a motion? Is anybody else there out there? May I respond, Chair? Mm -hmm. um, no, no, we got, we got it. Um, may I have a motion, please? Yes, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with BPDA design review and paying special attention to the new exterior material. Uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Barraza, we'll defer to BLC on this one because it's in the Aberdeen Historic. How about Condo? Condo? Can, 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 can I add a proviso that, yes, the, please. that the developer uh, maintains his commitment to 70% ownership? Um, no, we can't, we can't address ownership. Well, um, so um, we trust that the developer will continue to be in touch with the neighborhood and meet their um, their um, commitments. So the motion no, is we, for, we, we, we can have a proviso calling on a developer to maintain their commitments. Maintain commitments. Okay. 
Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Madam Chair, it's now 1040. I'm going to call the 1030 cases for any deferrals or withdrawals. Please share the address with me before you speak. Hi, this is Michael Chavez. Um, 49-49A, 49-49A, Linwood Street. Thank you. For the record, calling BOA 130-3471, 49-49A, Linwood Street. Name and address for the record, please. Michael Chavez, 26 Elm Hill Park, Dorchester. I'm the architect and representative for Stephen Keyes, the owner. And are you, what are you requesting? Uh, a deferral, uh, this, basically it's just a clerical issue with the address. Okay. Um, so everything, and nothing else is changing on design or zoning or anything like that. So uh, whenever we can get Thank as soon you. as possible, when it sets May all. I have a motion, please? Motion to defer. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. The date, please. We have July 12th at 11.30. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair and Board. That was 11.30, July 12th? Yes, 11.30 on July 12th. Thank you. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for the 1030 cases? You can give me the address first, please. There ain't none. I'll call the last case of 930, calling DOA 130 7395 25 Gardner Street. This is a constructing new 14 unit multifamily dwelling. The violation of Article 50, Section 29. The lot area is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29. The floor to air ratio is excessive. Article 50, Section 29, the building has excessive in stories. Article 50, Section 29, the building has excessive in feet. Article 50, Section 29, the usable open space is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, the front yard is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, the side yard is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, the rear yard is insufficient. Article 50, Section 43, off street parking and loading is insufficient. And Article 50, Section 44.3, the traffic visibility across the corner. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Maranci. I'm an attorney with the business address at 350 West Broadway in South Boston. I represent oh, City Realty Management. Joining okay. me is Josh Fetterman from CRM and Tanya Carrier from Calista Design Project Architects. Okay, let's hold on for a minute. Um, Mr. Um, uh, Mr. Mr. Ligris has recused himself, so this is a um, um, six-member board, and you will need five members to be in support for this to carry. The other thing I just need to put on the record is that this uh, project is in Ward 21, but it looks like the violations are cited for, um, which is Alston, and it looks like the violations that are cited uh, for Roxbury because these are all Article 50 violations and not Article 51 violations. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Understood on the, uh, the six-member board, uh, we would choose to go forward um, on the uh, cited violations. I, I would... Uh, I would have to. I would defer to Mr. Broom uh, as to the uh, the advertising requirement, legal advertising requirements. I think there's a problem here. So may I have a motion for the referral? So moved. Is there a second? Raz a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. The motion carries. May we have a date, please? Uh. We're going to have to do July 12th at 11.30. Okay. And hopefully, um, Mr. Maranci, that gives you enough time to get a new refusal letter. Okay? Thank, Thank you. you. See you then. Okay. Well, the first case for 10.30, calling DOA 1320322, 362 Meridian Street. This is a change of art from a three family to a four unit residential dwelling and rectory roof deck and new rear stairs. Violation of Article 9, Section 1, reconstruction and extension of a non conforming building. Article 53, Section 8, a three family or a four family use is conditional. Article 53, Section 9, excessive FAR. Article 53, Section 9, the number of allowed, number of allowed habitable stories has been exceeded. 
Article 53, Section 9, insufficient side yard setback. Article 53, Section 9, insufficient rear yard setback. Article 53, Section 52, roof structure restrictions and access. Article 53, Section 56, off street parking is insufficient. Article 53, Section 8, the use is forbidden, basement units are forbidden. Article 2017 5, this is in the East Boston I board. Name and address for the record, please. Morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Richard Linz, um, the business address of 245 Sumner Street, East Boston, on behalf of the petitioner. Uh, Madam Chair, if we just jump to the next slide and probably give a little better context. Um, this is a pre existing uh, three family dwelling located in the Lower Eagle Hill section of East Boston uh, at 362 Meridian Street. Um, the uh, proposal would change the occupancy of the existing structure by adding habitable space uh, in the lower level. Uh, it is identified as a basement because it's considered below the grade of Meridian Street. However, the grade uh, separation between Meridian Street and uh, Border Street located directly behind it actually uh, allows for, there's, there's actually a sub-basement under the level for which we're proposing occupancy. So this is a full walkout condition uh, and not considered sub-grade. If we jump to the next slide, that probably have a little bit better perspective on this. Uh, next slide, please. I know we have some elevations that show the actual uh, height. So we'll probably jump down a few more. As we're scrolling through this, uh, if you further, if you go further down uh, for the elevations, please. Uh, a little further. Here we go, perfect. Um, so the unit sizes uh, would all be generously sized, about 1,500 square feet total. Uh, these are all considered three bedroom units. As you can see from the section plan of the elevation, uh, the ceiling height is about nine feet, 10 inches from the basement level to the first floor, um, where grade is about two feet below uh, the first level. Uh, it, the condition in the rear of the property where we are proposing uh, rear decks and a stairwell that will access the proposed roof deck uh, as you can see, is a full walkout condition at that level uh, because of the, the great separation between Meridian Street and uh, Border Street. Uh, the neighborhood is predominantly multifamily, uh, even though uh, this is... So, um, uh, Mr. Lins, is it 50% uh, above grade or more than 50%? I'm more than 50% above grade, Madam Chair. I, we have other elevations for the full side of the building as well. And is there two means of egress? There are, there are, so you have the means of egress out of the rear of the building and then out, out the front as well. And tell us about that roof deck. The roof deck uh, would be uh, exclusive to the upper level. Uh, it is accessed by stairwell, not by head house. Uh, it is a three-story building, so we're not required to even propose a head house, uh, but we've agreed with the community to uh, access by stairwell in the rear. Um, by way of relief, uh, we do require uh, relief for the use. Uh, again, mentioning that this was predominantly multifamily residential in that area. This is on the edge of the 2F district, so a change from a 3 to a 4 would be a substituted non-conforming use, uh, hence the conditional uh, use being cited. We also require uh, relief for the um, FAR increase because we are proposing to increase the livable space in that lower level. Um, the rear decks uh, actually do come within the uh, setback. However, there's already existing conditions in the rear that are non-conforming as well. Uh, so we're requesting relief uh, with respect to that. Our rear yard setback is required to be at 30 feet. It is already a non-conforming condition with the existing building, but we, are, we will be at 16.8 feet with the reconstructed rear decks. So a variance is necessary for that as well. Last but not least is parking. There is no ability to access uh, any portion of this property for the one additional off-street parking space that's required. So therefore, requesting the variance, uh, even if we could add the curb cut, that would be, uh, again, detrimental to the surrounding neighborhood. Happy to answer any questions. How are the plans, Ms. Better? Madam Chair, the plans are adequate. Uh, do you have a front elevation? I believe there should be in the, um, if we scroll forward, Uh, a rendering or at the elevation? An actual drawing elevation. Yep, it should be, it should be towards the end, uh, Madam Ambassador, if you go to the end of the slide. I'm sorry, let's scroll back. Let me scroll back. I'm looking, at my, I'm looking at my version as well. 
see what page it would be on. I'm looking for a front elevation or a longitudinal section. I, I apologize. I, I understood that would have been included in the in the package. Okay. I'm looking at my package now that was sent over. I do see just see the rear elevation. I'm sorry, um, Ms. Betters. Yeah, I had sent over the full package that was submitted to to ISD. So I, I apologize if that wasn't included. So can you probably tell us what what the um, the the height is from uh, street level to to the um, to the front of the building? Yes. So the grade at the front specifically, of the building. Specifically, I'm sorry. Specifically, the height of the master bedroom on that first floor. Sure. Um, so the grade of the building, uh, the grade of the street at Meridian is. Uh, goes from a minus a two feet four inches and the grade to the rear of the property is 14 feet uh, four inches that's with the sub basement as well uh, with that nine foot somewhere in between um, the, the my understanding is the nine foot ten inches extends from both the front from, from the rear portion of the building all the way to the front um, so the, the the sloping grade i would assume is, is about uh, probably gets to about 50 percent close to the front of that building Okay. In the meantime, well, can we well, see another elevation? I this is bit, this is confusing to me. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's not it's not showing a sloping grade. Exactly. That's that's why I was looking for a long longitudinal section to it's understand. Showing, no, the, the side elevation should show a slope from front to rear, and it's not. Yeah, I, I apologize. I thought the uh, architect who submitted submitted everything that would be required for the review. So let me just check and see if I have something else additional on my file. Well, that's the further. Are, are you saying this is this is wrong? I mean, uh, no. I'm saying what the request was for a longitudinal ele elevation. I don't. I don't see it. I'm looking at the file. That but I you, you don't need a like, the, Just the side elevation is showing a completely flat grade. Just scroll down. Just a, it's just an inch or so. Just go down. Yeah, right there. Whoa, whoa. Stop. Yeah. See that? It's just a completely flat grade. Yep, I understand. So what is I can, it? I can request that the architect provide that. Um, if the board chooses to prefer to defer this, I can ask the architect to I, provide the detail. I, I think we need more information, Madam Chair. I'd like to make a motion. Okay, okay, let's make a motion then. Is there a second? I, I'd like to take a motion of defer. And there's a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And you oppose the date, please? Uh, it was July 26th at uh, 1130. Can we go beyond that, um, sir? I'm not. Yeah, we can go until August 9th. That works. Okay. And just to be clear, we're looking for a specific elevation that shows the grade from Meridian Street down to the back back of the property. Uh, yes, a front elevation that was missing, and a side elevation that shows the grade or the slope, or a long or a longitudinal section. Right. But okay. as, yep. As a minimum, you do need that front elevation as well. Will do. Thank you. So that would be August 9th at 11.30. Calling the next case, calling VOA 129-557272 High Street. This is an addition of a new third floor bedroom, bathroom, as well as a new roof deck. The violations, Article 62, Section 25, roof structure restriction. Article 62, Section 8, the building has excessive feet. Name and address for the record, please. Um, Madam Chair, I'm going to recuse myself from this matter. <coughs> uh, that's Ligris. Um, for the so um, whoever the applicant is, this is a six-member board, so you will need five members to be in support of it. So um, you can decide to go ahead or wait for a day when this is a full-member board. Uh, Madam Chair, we're going to go forward. 
Um, mm -hmm. this, is, this is Timothy Shan. I'm the architect for the project. I'm at 9 Wall Street in Charlestown. My Mr. clients... Mr. Shan, is, is this owner-occupied? Yes, it is. Okay, so please just go ahead and tell us what's being proposed. Okay, so this is an existing two-family residence in a 3F, uh, three families, 2000 zone. My owner-occupier clients live in the upper unit of the two-family, and they've just had the fourth child come into the world, so they, they need more bedrooms. So this building is three stories, but the back L section is only two. So like many other projects in Charlestown, we'd like to add some more third floor mass, basically add another bedroom for their new child. Uh, we've had a and good um, So yeah. what's, tell us about the, the square footage of the proposed addition. Yeah, we were looking for 235 square feet. Oh, okay, 235 square feet, okay. Yes, so, so it's, a big, then, it's an unusually large lot for Charlestown, so it's not an FAR violation unusually. And tell us but, about um, that roof deck. Uh, yes, and we'd actually like to do a roof deck up on the main portion of the building. You know, not on the L, but on the main, you know, three-story section of the building. And how is it going to be accessed? Uh, through a, a new staircase and a hatch. A new, uh, this is an ex uh, internal staircase? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, okay. Um, and it is only for the top floor. How are the plans, Ms. Better? Madam Chair, the plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support or in opposition of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Yamina Lashmi from Senator Edwards' office. Um, Senator Edward would like to go on the record in support of this project. She has met with the owner and has not received any significant, significant opposition. Thank you. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Caitlin Stapleton from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, our office hosted a butters meeting for this proposal on February 28th, and any questions or concerns were addressed by the applicant at this time. Um, since then, the applicant has continued to work closely with the neighborhood. Um, I have received 13 letters of support, along with 18 signatures of support, um, including those from Director Butters and the Boys and Girls Club. Most letters mentioned how they encouraged this proposal to support growing families in Charlestown. Um, I did receive three letters of opposition, including two from Direct Butters. Um, the opposition is mostly due to loss of view, natural light. Okay. Ms. Ambassador, anybody else? Madam Chair, Secretary here. We do have those letters that the Mayor's Office spoke of on support and opposition. Can you raise hands? I'll start with Greg and then go to Lee. Greg, can you state your name and address for the record, please? Yeah, how you doing? Greg McCarthy. I'm uh, directly next door at 74 High Street. Um, I didn't have a chance to get a letter in, but I am uh, in, in strong support of the project. It's, uh, it's not really uh, a hindrance or an interference on on uh, yeah. our property at all, so thank, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Ambassador, can we um, jump to um, City Councilor Coletta's office? Oh, absolutely, yep. Um, go Good ahead. morning, Elaine Donovan for Councilor Coletta's office. We'd like to go in support of this project. Thank you. Thank Welcome. You. Thank you. Uh, to Dave Horton. Um, once I'm muted, can you state your name and address for the record, please? Yes, my name is Dave Horton. I live at 70 High Street with my wife, Susan. We directly abut the proposed construction. Um, briefly, I'm speaking in opposition. Uh, I think there are several other neighbors that submitted letters, but we may be the most impacted. Uh, we purchased our property about six years ago based on specific requirements, a lot of natural sunlight and view. We have about 1,600 square feet, most of it in a common living room that's going to be about 15 feet from the proposed construction. So we have view south and west from our room, a lot of natural sunlight, the construction would eliminate our view to the west and reduce the, amount, the uh, sunlight. So we feel the construction would significantly reduce the value of our property, certainly would reduce the enjoyment of the property as we lose those features we specifically sought out and purchased. We do have additional concerns about the roof deck. This is already the tallest structure on the block. If they're granted a variance to build up, I think every owner on the block will quite reasonably feel entitled to their own variance to build up. And at that point, I think the zoning code becomes pretty much pointless in the overall neighborhood it would be changed for the worse as a result thank you um, yeah. can we get when can we hear from the the next person yep uh jackie i'm sending a request to unmute you can, once i'm muted can you state your name and address for the record 
I have nothing um, for High Street. Oh, okay, thank you. Can you uh, lower your hand? Yeah, and oh. I have no additional ways. Oh, what's, um, oh. Sean Riley. Um, are you looking to give testimony on this proposal? Sorry, I sent, just sent a request to unmute you. Sean? Hi, Sean. Okay, I'll go to Lee. Lee, are you looking to give testimony on this proposal? Um, and, and after after Lee, we will close comments. Okay, okay. Mr. Yes. Ambassador? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, my name is Lee Eisman, and I'm at 76 High Street. Uh, I'm the abutter to the abutter. And I am opposed mainly because of the domino theory that every neighbor on either side of us, including the immediate uh, uh, butters, will ask to have extensions and roof decks. And furthermore, the family at uh, 72 already has 70, uh, 4,300 square feet and five plus bedrooms and they have an apartment which they could take over if they wanted to have even more space, but they are basically choosing to take light from their immediate butters so that they can enjoy it themselves. Thank you. And just for the record, I want everybody to know that the approval or the disapproval of a specific project or anything does not set a precedent for this board we look at each project on its own merits. So, so given that, um, and Ms. Ambassador, we've heard from everybody. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with BPDA design review, paying special attention to the size of the roof deck. Second. Senator second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You're set with that proviso. Thank you for your time, everybody. Calling your next case, calling DOA 1310420, 80 Bunker Hill Street. This is a change of office from a two family to a three family. The violations, Article 62, Section 29, Austin Parking is insufficient. Article 62, Section 62 25, roof structure restricted. Article 62, Section 8, insufficient additional lot area. Article 62, Section 8, excessive FAR, and Article 62, Section 8, insufficient rate yard setback. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, Greg McCarthy for 80 Bucker Hill Street. Um, can you please go ahead and tell us what you're proposing to do? Sure, yeah, so uh, right now we have a two and a half story or 2.75 story uh, two family. Um, it's uh, located in the Row House District in Charlestown. Um, we're proposing to make it a full triple decker. Uh, so we would be taking a uh, half story and making it a full story and adding one additional unit. Right now it's two units. Uh, one unit's on the first floor. The second unit is the second and third floor. Uh, we would be making the third floor uh, its own uh, additional unit. So tell us about the size of the proposed third floor unit. Uh, the proposed third floor unit would be 900 square feet, a little bit less than that. And and is it what is it a two bedroom? And uh, it's a it's a three bedroom. Three bedroom. At, wow. Okay. Um, and then the other question is, what is the proposed addition? How many square feet is the proposed addition? Um, including the front where they captured the space from the front roof line and the rear, it's about a four hundred and ninety square foot addition. Okay, and is there a roof deck proposed in this? No. Is there any occupancy in the basement? No. Okay, how are the plans, Ms. Better? Madam Chair, the plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? 
Um, good morning, Madam um, Chair and members of the board. Caitlin Stapleton from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, our office hosted a butters meeting for this proposal on April 6. Concerns by the neighbors were addressed by the applicant at this time, and support was shown as well. Um, I have since received one letter of opposition from the Charlestown Preservation Society. Um, the opposition is in regards to the architectural historical significance of the building, along with sufficient living space and no second egress. At this time, I'd like to defer to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary, we have that letter of opposition. That's the only thing we have. Thank you. Okay. And Madam Chair, I do have one raised hand here from Zachary. Um, Zach, uh, once I'm muted, can you state your name and address for the record, please? Yeah, hi, my name is Zachary Endicott. I'm the owner at 82 Bunker Hill Street, which is a direct abutter next door, and I just want to speak in support of this project. Thank you. And then Jackie, if I guess, go ahead. Yes. Um, I, my brother-in-law, I'm the executor of the estate for 78 Bunker Hill Street, and I'm not opposed to it. I did have conversations with Greg. I think we can work it out together. Um, just on the backside roof line is my concern. Thank you. Thank you. And Madam Chair, I have no additional raised hands. Okay. Um, may I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I'd like to put a motion forward to approve the proviso that existing front dormer should not be modified and that a zoning relief should not be granted for the proposed third floor, front bedroom, and for BPDA design review. I'm sorry, so the front dormer not modified. Second, um, second. That a zoning relief should not be granted for the proposed third floor, front bedroom, and for the BPDA design, and to have BPDA design review. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Calling the next calling the next case, calling DOA 131 0768 173 to 175 Ipswich Street. This is an installation of signs on the exterior of the new MGM Music Hall along Ipswich and Lansdowne Street, including LED boards and static graphic signs. The violations of Article 11. Uh, Article 11, Section 7, electronic signs are conditioned and subject to approval. Article 66, Section 41, sign regulations for the Fenway neighborhood, Fenway Triangle neighborhood development area. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Hi. Kathleen Brill, attorney with Foley Hoag, business address of 155 Seaport Boulevard in Boston. Wow, who gives a shit? We got three units, baby. Come on. Uh, here representing the applicant 175 Ipswich Street LLC. Also here with me is Michael Lampier, project manager with JLL, Chuck Izzo, architect with DAIQ, and Claire Durant from Fenway Sports Group. In brief, we're here before the board for a conditional use permit for the installation and operation of electronic signage that will be affixed to the exterior of the new MGM Music Hall at the intersection of Lansdowne and Ipswich Streets adjacent to Fenway Park. The signage includes LED boards and static illuminated graphic signs that's seen on the cover page to that four page signage package set that we're so, looking at um, right now. So tell us about, so what we're looking at is that coming soon um, graphic with the two sidebars yep. and, and those projections that go down the street. Is that yes. what we're looking at? And, the, and we're looking at the color projections on one side and the MGM signage on the other side. Uh, yes, there are a couple components here. You've identified most of them. There's the LED ribbon board that you can see runs around the corners of Lansdowne and Ipswich Street. That marquee sign, which is that center white panel and the two side panels there. Uh, the MGM words and then the music hall words that are above and below that marquee sign. Uh, the two blue MGM music hall blade signs on either side. And then those uh, LED animated panels that run, that there are six of those that are on the side of Lansdowne Street. Those are the components. And tell us about the impact on residential uses, because there are no residential unit uses, right? Correct. They, uh, there's a, they are not within 150 feet of residential uh, units. There's a, a commercial district that sits between the property and the nearest residential district. Uh, so we meet all the design requirements for distancing from, from residential spaces. Um, we're located in the Lansdowne Street Entertainment District, which is one of the three areas the city specifically designated for electronic signage, assuming you meet all the uh, special permit criteria, which, which we do. 
Uh, so they've been designed to meet the design requirements of Section 1 under 11.7 of the code, including the siting, dimensional, and operational requirements. The applicant will be obtaining an annual license from the BPDA and will be paying the annual fee associated with that. Uh, and the team has undergone design review with the BPDA in accordance with the guidelines set out in Section 5 of the code. Our final approval uh, is pending issuance of this permit. Um, and lastly, we did have a community meeting on this topic. Uh, the, the presentation was oh, given um, to the community. And tell us, tell us um, will you, this will be purely um, static signage. It will not have ads or anything else on it. Uh, there, there will be animation on the signs, but it's all it's all intended to be on premise related to what's going on in theater at that time. Okay, and um, Jeff, I have a question for you. This does this meet signage requirement for the uh, MGM uh, logo? Yes, we've been doing design review on this. This was an Article eighty project. Uh, a little while ago, and this is the final component of that Article 80 project. This actually did come before uh, the board for your approval for the theater, um, and this is the final component. But yes, we've been doing design review, and actually we like to go on record uh, in support of this. Okay. Um, any questions? Uh, how are the plans, Ms. Barraza? Madam Chair, the plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Will these be 24-hour uh, uh, signs? Uh, no, there are uh, um, hours of operation limitations built into the code, and we will be complying with those. And for the record, can you put those on uh, on the record? What they are under the code, I can help. Uh, uh, hours of operation are limited to 7 a.m. from 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. That's under 11.7 slash Thank you. 1D. Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Molly Griffin from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, our office would like to defer to the board's judgment on this matter. There was a community meeting on April 6, 2022, um, where the applicant uh, presented this plans to neighbors um, and addressed their questions and concerns. I have received no uh, emails, letters of support or opposition to this. So at this time, I'd like to defer to the board's judgment. Thank you. I'm not sure I have no raised hands at the moment. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval. Is there does a it, second? Does it need continuing uh, BPDA design review? It, it doesn't sound like it. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set. Good luck. Thank you, Madam Chair. Calling your next case, calling DOA 130 8425, 1011 Harrison Avenue. This is the Benjamin Franklin Institute of Technology. Technical calls will be relocating to 1003 to 1013 Harrison Avenue, Roxbury. The project includes demolition of an existing building to provide demolition. <laughs> construction of a new three-story 68,000 square foot education building and subdivision of a parcel into two lots, one lot with 24,527 square feet and the second lot where the building is going to be located with 30,099 square feet. The violation of Article 50, Section 10, the call it use is conditional and Article 50, Section 11, the dimensional regulations in the, in the Roxbury EDA area. Name and address for the record, please. I know BFIT is on. Um, are you sure? Will you be speaking? Um, Matt Matt Kiefer is the attorney, and okay, uh, a couple of people on. Okay, Matt, I see you. Um, I'm going to make you a panelist, Matt. If you can just accept that and meet yourself, you be all set. Is Rosenberg with you all as well, Gail? No. 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 All right, thank you. It's Dr. Francis and Matt Kiefer and I. All right, go ahead, Matt. You come in with your yes, thank you, Jessica. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm Matt Kiefer. I'm an attorney at Goulston and Stores, and my address is 7 Serena Road in Jamaica Plain. 
uh, and I'm here on behalf of the Ben Franklin Institute of Technology. With me, as you just heard, is Dr. Aisha Francis, the president of Ben Franklin Institute, uh, Marty Jones, development advisor to the school, and also Gail Sullivan from Studio G Architects, should they be helpful in answering questions. Uh, as Mr. Fortune said, this is about the relocation of the school from their longtime home in the South End to Nubian Square, uh, to a 68,000 square foot building in Nubian Square. The college actually began under the will of Ben Franklin, and the building that they occupy in the South End is over 100 years old and really no longer suitable for the college's use. Uh, the college is an affordable urban college. So, Ms. Uh, Councillor Kiefer, can you yes. please go directly to the project itself and the violations, okay? I'm happy to. The project is uh, a three-story building, 68,000 square feet on a approximately 30,000 square foot parcel of land in Nubian Square. It's in an economic development area and consistent with the Roxbury Master Plan. It's also undergone large project review from the BPDA uh, and has had a pretty extensive review, including before the Roxbury Neighborhood Council and the Roxbury Strategic Master Plan Oversight Committee. Uh, that you can see from the floor plan here, the, the, the project would have a combination of classrooms, tech labs, and offices, student gathering spaces. Uh, it needs two pieces of zoning relief, Madam Chair. The use, the college use, and the accessory uses, the tech labs, um, are all conditional uses in the Nubian Square economic development area. The college has programs from auto engineering, auto uh, uh, to uh, opticianry, uh, and cybersecurity, and there are a series of labs inside the building as well as classrooms. So that's the first item of zoning relief. The second item is FAR. The building actually conforms to the height requirement in, in the district of 55 feet. It's slightly less than that, but it slightly exceeds the maximum FAR of 2.0. The FAR is about 2.26. Those are the two items of zoning relief we're requesting today. Okay, so, um, okay, is there any parking proposed on site? There is no parking proposed on site. There is parking available uh, in the neighborhood uh, project. Uh, if you'll go to the sort of zoom out, Jessica, uh, the Nubian Ascends, uh, there's, a, there's another slide that shows it in its location. Yeah, if you'll scroll up a little bit. There's ample on-street parking available, and we've also been in touch with the owner of Nubian Ascends at right there, future Nubian Ascends development right across the street. So will the, I, I guess my question to you, Councillor, is if um, there will be dedicated parking for BFIT, and if, you know, if there will be, if this, if this there needs to be an ancillary parking permit, or, uh, I mean, because I just need to be clear that parking is not not a violation as far as this project is concerned. That's correct. There is no parking violation as part of this project. In this district, off-street parking for projects that are subject to large project review, which this was, off-street parking is determined as part of large project review. And through that process, you know, we went through that process and we're clear that there is no um, on-street uh, no on-site parking proposed in connection with the project. So the off-site parking in the future, if there's an ancillary use for that, that will be, that zoning relief will be obtained by the Nubian Ascents developer. Okay, and then I think, what was my second question? What are the proposed hours of operation? Um, well, it's a school. Uh, I may ask uh, Aisha, Dr. Francis, to uh, answer the question about a after hours and weekend operation. Certainly, we are currently uh, planning so to have the same so schedule. Do do Dr. Francis, good to see you again. Hi, good um, to see you too. Uh, can you please put your name and address on the record? Yes, Aisha Francis. I reside at 10 Draper Road in Hyde Park. Thank you, Chairwoman Araujo. Okay. The, the college. 
The college operates from 7 a.m. until 10 p.m. currently, and we are that's Monday through Friday. On occasion, we have weekend events, but we uh, typically do not operate on the weekends, and we plan to have the same schedule in our new location. Okay. Um, and uh, your tech labs will be used purely for your students then? That, that's correct. Yes. Because yeah. this is a conditional use, so I just have to think through. And will any of these tech labs need specific venting or anything like that? Or is this tech labs because of the auto use and other things like that? I'm ask, going to ask Gail Sullivan from Studio G to uh, to answer that question, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Gail Sullivan, I reside at 56 Yale Terrace in Jamaica Plain, and my office, Studio G Architects, is also in Jamaica Plain. But we have a variety of different labs, and they have different mechanical and technical requirements. The first floor rear is all automotive. And we'll be doing, for instance, oil separation, oil capture for that. There are specific venting requirements, both in the auto labs, also in a couple of the other laboratories, all of which uh, has been addressed with uh, Cosentini, our mechanical electrical plumbing engineers. Okay. And then, um, so this, this, um um, the purpose is very specific. It talks about the 30,000 plus square feet that go to BFIT. Tell us about the 24, 525 square feet. What is the anticipated use longer term? Uh, undetermined, Madam Chair. The, the short term use is for construction staging. Mm -hmm. um, and the long term use, by the, it could well be a resource for the college's expansion in the future, but we are not proposing any expansion today and did not propose any expansion in the Article 80 process. So then what could we anticipate that should there be um, no longer term use is that once the building is constructed, that'll be open space? Well, for some period of time, it could be open space. That, okay. That's correct. Okay. Uh, how are the plans, Ms. Uh, better? Madam Chair, the plans are adequate. I, I do have a question regarding the rear access to the car repair. Um, is the open space mainly for students, or do you see it as a, as a kind of little park? And it's, then has this been reviewed by BTD? Uh, uh, yes to both. Uh, it, we do envision it also as uh, sort of an open space. Um, and it, it, it has been reviewed by BTD. We're in the process of uh, finalizing a transportation access plan agreement with BTD concerning that, that space. And is it being used, who is it for, that space in the rear? Well, it's primarily for the school. Um, it is a way to get cars in and out of the of the shop, of the lab. It's not like going in and out of a parking garage. Those movements are, are much rarer. But it's also envisioned as a, you know, an open space plaza for students to gather. It will be open to the public during hours that the school's in operation. And then um, can you also comment on the sustainability sustainability measurements? We are targeting the gold for the building. That's it. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Will there be any uh, solar panels or anything like that? Uh, Gail, could you answer that? I'm happy to. Yes, Madam Chairwoman, the, oh, we've actually got, if Jessica, if you can scroll down, we have a roof plan and site plan combination after the floor plans. That might, that, thank you, right? Nope, you just passed it. Right there, uh, uh, not the thank you slide, the one above, thanks, right there. So uh, a little hard to see, it's shown in white boxes here. There are three large arrays, they're all number seven on this plan. Those are the uh, photovoltaic solar electric panels. And then within that, uh, what's marked as number eight, which is worth mentioning, our labs. There'll be a live rooftop uh, laboratories here for HVAC 
students who will have real-time equipment to work on on the roof, uh, but also for all of the other students. Okay. And perhaps access to the photovoltaic panels. So we're looking to use the building systems as much as possible as learning opportunities for students who are learning, among other things, construction trades. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, this is Jason Gant from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. While we will not be making a formal decision on this matter, we do want to defer this to the board and also highlight the fact that we have not gotten any new letters of support and or opposition for this project. Thank you. Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board. Anna Calderon from Council President Sling's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support of this proposal. This um, original located in the South End in District 2, Benjamin Franklin has been planning to relocate to Nubian Square to help expand and continue the educational services. Over the past year, they have met with Roxbury residents and organizations about their plans and has gathered support from the neighborhood. The proposal project will clean up a vacant site and activate the important corner of Harrison Ave and Utah Street and add to the economic vitality of Nubian Square with their staff and students. The, B the BPDA voted anonymously to approve the project in December of 2021, and I hope the CBA will approve this as well. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. Good morning. Um, this is Elaine from Councilor Anderson's office. I have a, a, a letter from Councilor Anderson. Uh, dear Madam Chair and members of the Boston Zoning Board uh, of Appeals, I am writing to support the Benjamin Franklin Institute of Technology, BFIT, moving into Newton Square. This institute has long served a diverse student population, and their relocation into the heart of Roxbury has potential to help serve as an educational hub for the community and the economic anchor for, lo for many local businesses at large. Moving thank forward. You. So thank you. Uh, not to cut you short, but we do have other raised hands. No. Nope. We appreciate it. And go ahead, Minor. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Minor Perez representing the Carpenters Union. On behalf of hundreds of union carpenters that live and work throughout the city of Boston, want to go on record of support. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No additional raised hands at the moment. And we have letters in support on the <laughs> fortune. No, Madam Chair, we do not. Oh, uh, I th I, yeah, I had, I had seen some letters in support from um, um, the, 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 only one we have is the only one we have is uh, Mr. Flynn. Uh, okay. uh, so we can submit, uh, uh, Member Fortune, I, I'm not sure why they didn't get to you, but we also have letters of support from uh, Representative John Santiago, from Betty Tony of the Roxbury Neighborhood Council, and from Norm Stembridge, who chaired the IAG and is also on the Strategic Master Plan Oversight Committee. We'll make sure and get those to you. Yeah, they could be, they could be in an email form that just didn't get to the folder. Right. Thank you. Okay, given that information, may I have a motion, please? I'll Madam motion. Chair, I'd like to, Madam Chair, I'd like to just say that this is a real great project. It's a great anchor institution for the community. I want to applaud the project. In terms of um, community space, I just wanted to put it on the record that when you're dealing with auto repair, there's this kind of culture of gathering, and I just want the applicant to be um, careful with the design of the public space in terms of whether it's a community asset or whether it's a place for students. With that said, I would like to put forward a motion of approval. And do we need continued design review? Yeah. Yes, I, I do think so. <laughs> I like the design. <laughs> but, you know, because I think what, what, what happens here um, is uh, is that, and, and I have to admit that my office was um, not too far from this project. Essentially, you could look at the rear window at the project. Um, and there's the old fire station there that has been converted by HBI. 
Um, and then there is also that development that's at the corner of Melnia and Harrison that we've also approved. Um, and so there's like a new context that's going up for that corner. Um, and so I do think there is an opportunity for making it right um, for, for the neighborhood. I agree with you. I think the, the design would be the overview of it as a campus because there's several projects that are contributing exactly. to it. So I think more of the urban design, but less so the particularities of the exterior. And Madam Chair, if I could just say, we will be second hold on, hold on, by hold on, Councilor. We, you know, it's it's hard when everybody has a mic, but the yes. board is in discussion. Um, so may I, any so there's a motion, there's a second by Mr. Ruggiero for design review. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And I too would like to echo. Um, this better on the, on the the potential value of this project to the community. So good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Madam Chair, that worked out well. You brought us right into the 11:30 rediscussions for any deferrals or withdrawals. If you could please give me the address first. 221 East Eagle Street, Mr. Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Lynch. We got in BOA 1256992, 221 East Eagle Street. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good morning again, Madam Chair, members of the board, Richard Lynn's business address, 245 Sumner Street, East Boston, on behalf of the petitioner of Volney Capital. Um, may I have a motion for deferral? Motion to defer. Is there a second? For us, a second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries the date, please. We'll have a date of July 26th at 1130. I'm going to, again, Mr. Secretary, I'm not available. He's on vacation. Oh, okay. So we can Dr. do August 9th. August 9th August at 1130. And, and may I just, I know on this particular case, um, uh, board member Lee Gerson, and board member Ruggiero typically <laughs> recuse themselves. Is it possible to see if we could get this on a date when uh, when we have a full seven member board, that seems to be the issue with this particular project. Well, we might be into 2023 on that one, Claire. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Leg uh, Mr. Legris, will you be sitting on the 9th, August 9th? <coughs> I do intend to sit on the 9th. <coughs> okay, so let's do it for a later date in August. <coughs> Hold on two seconds. We'll do August 23rd. Okay. I will not be here on August 23rd. August 23rd okay. at 1130 is the lucky number. Thank you very much and have a great day. So, are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for the 1130 rediscussions? Yes, uh, Mr. Secretary, 19 Granada Park. Thank you very much. Regarding DOA 1178769, Six nine nineteen Granada Park. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good morning, uh, Madam Chair, Mr. Secretary, Attorney Nick Zazula, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller, Twenty Eight State Street in Boston, asking for a withdrawal of this application, please. Okay, I'll make a motion for denial without prejudice. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for the 1130 rediscussions? Hearing none, Madam Chair, I'm going to go to the uh, subcommittee. Uh, on, we met on Thursday, May 19th, 2022 at 5, 5 p.m. down at 1010 Mass Ave. These are the hearing. Case BOA 126, 6216, 134 Wordsworth Street was adding more room for additional kids, was approved with BPDA. Case BOA 131-0017, 223 Commonwealth Avenue, was a change of architect from five unit dwelling to a one unit and 870 square feet of roof deck, it was approved. Case BOA 128-0637, 9 Denison Street, was denied without prejudice, was no show. Case BOA, 1270602 10 Johnston Road was to finish a portion of the basement, accommodating office and recreational space. It was approved with no basement, no bedroom in 
the basement. Case BOA 1279421, 16 Hopkins Street. It was a convert one family home to a two family. It was approved with no bedrooms in the basement. Case BOA 1280494, 38 Summer Street. It was a build up the back of the house with two levels, first floor, kitchen, bathroom, two, two bedrooms. It was approved with BPDA. Case BOA 1263217, 996-998 River Street. It was a carport with cement slab. It was approved with BPDA. Case BOA 1281382, 27 Whitmore Street. It was construction of a sunroom addition. It was approved with BPDA. Case BOA 1285675, 15 Montfield Street. It was an additional parking space and existing driveway and existing curb cut. It was approved with a 10 to 12 foot curb cut for BTD review. Case BOA 1261958, 15, 59 Dunboy Street is being heard today at 1130. And on the rediscussion, case BOA 127, 7213, 43 Pear Street was a change of from a one to a two family with a new addition. It was approved with BPDA. Madam Chair, that concludes the subcommittee's report. I'd like to make a motion to accept the recommendations of the subcommittee. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Let's take a 10 minute break. We'll reconvene at 11.45. Uh, and Recording we'll, stopped. And we will proceed.
um, Mr. Fortune, let's let's go ahead with uh, 1030. We'll do, Madam Chair. Calling the next case, calling DOA 126 Wyman Street. This is a proposed one Osprey parking, existing three family dwelling, and relocating the curb cut, constructing a parking pad. Violations Article 10, Section 1 Off Street parking shall not be located less than five feet from the side lot line. Article 55, Section 40 Off Street parking loading. And Article 55, Section 9 the use of open space is insufficient. Give an address for the record, please. Wyman Street off from Jamaica Plain. I do have a hand raised. Give me one second. Um, Bob, is that you? Let me. I sent the request on you. Yours, Sarah. I think that's yes. Yes. Oh, oh, Bob. Okay. Oh. Hi. You should be able to hear me now. Yeah. Hi. Great. So um, my name is Sarah Ewing. I'm one of the residents here at 76 Wyman and the applicant for this project. Overall, it's it's a simple relocation of a curb cut, an existing curb cut from one side of the property to the other side, which would allow for the construction of a parking pad for unit one. That's that's my unit. Um, currently, where the existing curb cut is doesn't allow for enough space or any usable space for a parking pad or anything, and, and actually has more of a hindrance for on-street parking because a lot of people will not park in front of that curb cut. So. We'd like to relocate it to the other side to allow for off-street parking for our unit. So this is how many how many units in this building? Three units. We're on the first floor. Okay, and um, again, uh, so this would be a new a new curb cut on the other side of the building. Yeah, how the app or how we the application was is really a relocation because we do have a curb cut already in existence on the other side. But yes, it would be a new curb cut cut in on the left hand side here. And has this address been before this board um, before? I'm um, not since I lived in the property, which was starting in April of last year. And not for this this project outside of a butters meetings that have already occurred. Okay. Um, you know, uh, there's something that we need to just inform you that um, generally this board is not in support of um, parking that is proposed to where the car could potentially work into the front yard, be in the front yard. So I'll just put that out there. Um, how are the plans, uh, Ms. Better? Madam Chair, the plan's adequate. Any questions from the board? Uh, it does, yeah. well, it's hard to tell, but it looks like the, it would not be front yard parking. It, um, and it would be roughly even with the front of the house, but, but it's just, but it still is a question of replacing one on street and one off street. Right. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, Mr. D'Amico has spoken on this. I believe he's on. Mr. D'Amico, can you, um, chime in please? Uh, Madam Chair, Lady, and uh, members of the board, Bob D'Amico, Boston Transportation Department. I know this is a relocation of a curb cut, uh, but the old curb cut was grandfathered in, uh, first of all, and we're not really supportive of a curb cut being put in place to take uh, a parking space off the street. And I understand there's one there now, but that was put there long ago. And secondly, in my opinion, I think it's... Uh, be considered uh, front yard parking because it's extremely close and I think it would fall under the category of front yard parking. So uh, representing the BTV, I'd like to go in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, the opinion of, uh, to be uh, opposed to this uh, request. Thank you. Um, so, I will, so this, oh. I'm just looking at Google Maps, so this, this curb cut is is it's going to be extended, so it's going to be like a for both properties. I'm just trying to figure it out. Um, I, I can answer that. So right now, our neighbor has a curb cut, so that's where you're seeing the 9.8 size to the left mm -hmm. of the proposal. Um, most likely, just because the curb cuts would be so close together, it would seem like a double curb cut in terms of the overall 21 feet. 
it is not a connection to that, but, but frankly, all along the street, there are similar parking pads, um, it's similar <laughs> kind of front yard parking in, in a sense. So from that perspective, it would be kind of an extension of an existing curb cut, but again, a relocation from the other side. I just, uh, the secretary here, I, I just have a question. I'm looking at the Google Maps as well that Mr. Ruggiero was just looking at. But if I'm looking at the house and I'm looking to the right of it, there's no way you're parking a vehicle or anybody's parking a vehicle on the right-hand side, are they? Cor correct. You cannot fit a anything on the right-hand side. Uh, and, and I would like to... That is. Yeah, and I would like to emphasize that often people on the street will not park in front of that because they think it's a curb cut and they think they'll be towed. Um, so we often lose on-street parking because people won't park in front of that um, if one of the owners is not there. So you're absolutely correct. You cannot park on the right-hand side of the property. Thank you. Okay, so let's just have everybody, um, is anybody here to speak in support or in opposition? Yes, Chad. I'm sorry. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, upon anyone with the Mayor's Office Neighborhood Services, at this time I'd like to defer judgment to the board. This applicant did go before the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council and receive their support. Thank you. Madam Chair, I do have one raised hand. Um, oh, no, that's Bob. Bob, you all set? Do you have like to give any testimony here? Hi, Bob Benico. You good? Oh, yes. Um, I like to request denial only because um, there is parking on this side. And when you have a parking uh, gar uh, curb cut put in place for one space, it's almost like private parking. And we don't usually support that. Um, the front yard parking might be debatable, but I still think it is. And that's why I like to go on the record as uh, requesting denial. Madam Chair, can I, can I ask um, hold on, hold a question? On, hold, hold on. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Ms. Ambassador, any other raised hands? No, ma'am, I have no additional raised hands. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Better. Is there a way that we can ask the applicant to, um, the existing curb cut to repair? that one close off to allow for the off street parking um, that she would then uh, so that then she can put a curb cut in the other side so to close one but to open the other and so there's an equal gain well actually um, I'm not looking at the uh, the abutting property I'm just looking at uh, the no, property I'm, like, I'm, I'm, talk I'm talking about her property so right mm -hmm. now she has an existing curb cut that is not really functional um, to the right of her property. I'm suggesting to close that so then mm -hmm. you can have an off street parking, but to open it where there is room. Okay, on the right side. I, yes. I, I, yeah, we, okay, I see. Yep, so there's a win win situation for both. And, uh, yeah. And, yeah, and okay. I want to ask the applicant have you spoken to your butter about? cross easement so you could share that um part of that curb cut you mean on the left hand side here yeah it yeah, doesn't so there, work yeah oh sorry no that's okay um so right now there is it's hard to see on these surveys but there is a thin line um with with garden um that's actually on his side of the property so there there is a way where it would be a separate curb cut um, it's not adjoining um, with their curb cut. So you can see on the plans, there is an actual additional kind of one of those marble corners there. Um, and I, I would like to make the note that the plan was always to to fill that right-hand side curb cut. Um, so okay. definitely agree with that proposal. So, so Ms. Ambassador, can you mute everybody just so that the board is um, can can have their discussion? Um, yeah, I mean, I think... I think there's a way to do this to minimize the impact. Can I have a motion, please? So I'll, I'll make a motion to approve with design review and BTD review to um, minimize the curb cuts and, and okay. still, still the other curb cuts. I'm going to pass on design review on this one because the okay. BTD is going to look at it. We don't need to look at it. Yeah. Okay just somebody to look at it to minimize the impact of the okay. street. Is there a second? A second I motion, Lickers. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set with that proviso. Good luck. 
calling Thank the next. You very much. Uh, calling the next case, calling BOA 132 2929 127 Washington Street. This is an existing two family and chapel building renovated into three residential units. Violations Article 50, Section 29, the usable open space is insufficient. Article 50, Section 43, off street parking is insufficient. And Article 50, Section 29, the additional lot area is insufficient. Name and address for the record. Uh, yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is Andrew Litchfield at 22 Alpha Road in Dorchester. So um, I can jump right into it, but what we're looking at is um, a existing building that <clears throat> has two residential units with a um, first floor, what was a residential unit, but was turned into a chapel 20 or 30 years ago. And our proposal is to renovate the existing building and turn them into three residential uh, units. So tell us about the residential units. What is the square footage? Yes. So the square footage is going to be, they're all going to be three bedroom, two bathroom units. Unit one is going to be 1,460 square feet. Unit two is 1,130 square feet and unit three is 1,250 square feet. Any roof deck proposed or anything? No, there's no roof deck proposed. It's a uh, pitched roof. So uh, we're basically, you know, no exterior work is being done besides painting and replacing windows. So there's all internal use, okay? Yes, Madam um, Chair. How are the plans, Ms. Better? Madam Chair, the plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Denise Santos from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. I would like to go on record and state that the applicant has met with the director butters and also the community, um, the civic association for this area. They have support from the association. At this time, we would like to defer any judgment to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands at the moment. May I have a motion? Um, let's see. Um, um, let's see. Um, uh, BPDA, uh, Jeff, do you want to go on the record? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, members of the board, Jeff Hampton, BPDA. We recommended that it be sent to landmarks. I'm not I'm now looking at it. I'm not even sure that that's really going to meet a threshold over there. Uh, if it's only painting and windows. So straight straight approval will be fine with us. Okay. Uh, may I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. So you're all set. Good luck. Thank you all. <clears throat> calling your next case, calling BOA 117 4170 1677 to 1679 Dorchester Avenue. This is a change of art from a three family to a three family in office and construct 830 square feet of addition. The violations article 65, section 32. This is in the, in the neighborhood district uh, review required. Article 65, section 41, off street parking and loading. Article 65, section 8, office use forbidden in the 3FD 3000 subdistrict. And article 65, section 9, front yards insufficient. And article 65, section 9, side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Hey. My name is Tu Luang Thang. I'm the owner of the property number 16771679, Dorchester Avenue. Are you representing yourself? Yes. Okay. Um, have you seen the BPDA recommendation? Yes. You have? Uh, but but after I discussed with my architect company, they say that they done all the research and we comply, we unify with the, the properties in the neighborhood. So I don't see any problem with that. And why don't you just tell us what you're proposing to do then? Um, because we have extended family. I have parents live with me. I have two young children and I currently work in home home. So I, I need a space for myself because I currently work in the kitchen uh, table. And so I will live there. I will work there. And that is, this will be my life. 
Um, so appearing to me is very important. I like to make it beautiful to for me where I live. Um, so, and so, so can you backtrack? So this is a three-family unit, right? Yes, that's it's correct. A, it's a legal three-family. Is there any occupancy in the basement? No. No? And which unit do you live in? On the first floor. You live in the first floor unit. Have you explored building your office in the basement? I, I look at that and I, I don't have the light because we live in the, you know, on the ground. And I look around the neighborhood, I think, um, look at my uh, architect uh, proposal. He has many plans that, um, many properties in the area that have no setback. But he said that your property will be beautiful, will be stand out because we have the beautiful face and you have the top roof for you to do plans. Um, so, so you, where, where are you proposing the addition? From the first to the top floor or just on the first floor? No, only on the first floor to the street level. Okay, um, how are the plans, Ms. Subbetter? Madam Chair, the plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Um, is there is there an elevation or a rendering? So it, it's just extending the front. Oh, okay. Right. And, and this is a three F um, a three family district, which is a three F D, which kind of needs which recognizes the triple decker general sense of the of the street. Okay. Just, just to give some context, there the typology is similar, but the difference is that there's a spacious front setback with these kind of commercial fronts. The issue here is that it's going all the way to the property line. And the and also the use is forbidden. Yeah. And this is I, I mean, this, this one block, all the houses are, are very, very, very similar. I no, I get it. You know, so the question is you know, do we help um, get it back to the 3D or the three family scene, or do we um, continue it in the way that it is? Um, is anybody here to speak in support or in opposition of this proposal? I actually have 14 neighbors. No, 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 no. hold on, hold on. I'm not uh, just, you know, please wait until we call on you, okay? Is anybody here to speak in support or in opposition? Yes, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. George Huynh with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office hosted an abutters meeting for the project on November 9th of last year. There were no concerns there. However, the applicant was unable to answer technical questions at the St. Mark's Area Civic Association, leading to a letter of opposition from them. Uh, we received letters of support. Um, at this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary, we do have those letters in Mayor's office spoke of support and opposition. And I have all these things at the moment. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hampton. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Jeff Hampton, BPDA. Uh, the front yard addition just completely changes everything on that block. Uh, it's not a big block to begin with, and it's all residential, um, but the, the addition is completely inappropriate for that residential zoning district. So we're on record in uh, denial. Thank you. Okay, um, may I have a motion, please? Motion Madam. to deny. Yeah. Sure. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I'm sorry, your project has been denied. Good luck. Calling the next case, calling BOA 129 8430 717 to 721 American Legion Highway. This is a cannabis establishment co located at the Medical, Mar Medical Marijuana Dispensary, Recreational Marijuana Retail Dispensary, Marijuana Cultivator, and Marijuana Product Manufacturer, erecting 8,900 square foot, one to two story building. Violations Article 29, Section 4, the Greenbelt Protection Overlay District, 
Article 67, Section 11, Cannabis Establishment and Conditional Use in the CC1 Subdistrict. Name and address for the record, please. Hello, Madam Chair and members of the board. This is Mike Ross from the law firm of Prince Lobel with a business address. Uh, I'm sorry, Councillor. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, Madam Chair, I'm going to have to recuse myself on this matter as well. Okay, so this is um, uh, Mr. Ligris has recused himself. Okay, uh, so, so Councillor, you need um, uh, five, five of the six members in support of your proposal. We will proceed, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, I'm also here with my client, Josh Silver of Silver Therapeutics. Uh, this uh, proposal should look extremely familiar to the board. Uh, it was approved uh, by the board uh, January 17th of 2020. The reason why we're here is because during construction, uh, the structure became um, very compromised and needed to come down. Uh, and with it, uh, effectively remove the entitlement we received from this zoning board. So we are now back here with an ERT permit seeking to reapprove uh, the exact project that, that you saw as before. Um, just to refresh your recollection, uh, as the secretary mentioned, this is uh, a cannabis establishment that will have medical, retail, uh, adult use, cultivation and product manufacturing on site. Slide five is, um, uh, Jessica, is a good slide to, to kind of start with. Uh, this is the site plan uh, that I can just walk you through kind of the program. It's, it's actually, uh, I think the next one. And, um, just, there you go. That's good. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. So please talk us through it. Yes. So what you see here is the facility um, with uh, 19 parking spaces uh, on a large lot of 20,000 square feet. Um, the facility itself, as mentioned, is just almost 9,000 square feet. Uh, with a retail floor of around 1900 square feet 12 point of sale stations as well as a cultivation small cultivation site intended to teach folks how to grow uh, from the boston area of approximately 2500 square feet if you go to slide six just the next slide there's a good floor plan uh, it is two floors uh, with a basement but the main floor is that middle uh, you know first floor where the activity occurs as you can see on the left uh, kind of back left there, upper left of your screen, there's a man trap uh, to enter the facility. Uh, there will be a security person at that man trap uh, location in the main entrance. Uh, uh, you can just scroll up just a teeny bit. Um, and then security will, or uh, ID check will also occur at the point of sale stations, as you see in kind of the center area of the uh, of, of the uh, floor plan. Um, and was, was the cultivation in a greenhouse on the right hand side? Yeah, you're remembering the greenhouse, Madam Chair. It's up, uh, if you go up, a, go up a bit, uh, if you just, Jessica, there, it's that, it's that um, rectangle, that unimpeded rectangle uh, that's 2,500 square feet uh, where the cultivation more will occur. Uh, that has its own separate entrance for employees only. You can see there's a side entrance uh, on the side of the building on the right hand side of your screen and then there's also an employee only entrance at the bottom of your screen really at the front of the building the entrance to this facility is in the rear so there's no queuing or anything like that in terms of the retail but the cultivation everyone who's going to be going there that will be people who are um, credentialed to enter the facility for strictly the cultivation um, there's also 34 cameras on the inside of the facility with eight cameras on the outside. Here you're seeing an elevation. That red uh, barn-like structure is, is really the original structure being rebuilt. Um, and then the gray is really the, the um, really all new construction for the rest of the facility. At this point, it's all new construction, but that red barn is, is still uh, similar, uh, almost identical in original um, dimensions, if you will. The only other thing I would add is that the hours of operations uh, are 9 to 8, Monday through Saturday, Sunday, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. We're anticipating around 10 uh, employees per shift. Um, and and I, I can pause there, Madam Chair, and answer any questions. And so is the footprint the same as it was uh, in the previous application, or has it changed uh, in any way? It is, uh, it is the same, Madam Chair. 
Exactly the same. Okay. Exactly the same. How are the plant? How are the plants, Miss Better? Madam Chair, Madam Chair, the plants are adequate. Um. Any questions from the board? Yeah, I mean, not that it matters. I'm just a little confused. Uh, if it's a, if it's the same plan, same footprint, because the building was compromised, why why are you back? Well, it's a, it's a hard lesson uh, in construction, uh, Mr. Ehrlich, but once they knock down the, um, the structure that's there, there's nothing to retain the, uh, the rights, if you will, uh, of the uh, entitlement that we receive from the Zoning Board of Appeal. It's, there's, there's nothing left. And when you keep something up and it's an ALT permit, you, you still have those rights. But once it's taken down, it's, it's um, you know, there are ways to, to, to handle it, but in this case, it wasn't handled. It was kind of an emergency situation. They had to take it down. So we had to go back through the process. So you don't have that two-year window that most most people have? Um, yeah, I mean, we're going to reset it now. Uh, we would yeah. reset it um, because okay. of that. There were some other things we had to do, but this is really the biggest uh, hurdle was just the waiting to get back here in front of the board and, and do this again. Okay. okay. Is anybody here to speak in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Bonner Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. It's time we defer judgment to the board. Um, the Office of Neighborhood Services ran a community process uh, for this proposal back in 2019 under a different administration. Um, you know, they worked out a number of issues with the neighborhood and entered a host community agreement with the city. Um, since then, our office is unaware of any recent concerns raised by abutters or neighbors. With that, we defer to the board. Thank you. And um, BJ, go ahead. Hi, BJ Swagnu uh, from District 4 City Council's office. Uh, we would like to go on record in support of this project. Uh, thank you. I do have another way. I just want to make sure. Hi, Andrea, you're all set? Are you having computer issues? Yes, I'm okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Yep, yeah, um, Rick, I sent a request to unmute you. When unmuted, can you state your name and address for the record, please? Yes, it's Rick Yoder, 180 Mount Hope Street, Rosendale, Massachusetts. Uh, I'm a, a co-chair of the Mount Hope Canterbury neighborhood. Two and a half years ago, we met with a silver, uh, representative from Silver Therapeutics, a number of community neighborhood meetings. Um, we discussed some compromises to the plan, and um, there were dis different opinions on supporting or not supporting. So we took an online vote of the membership to get a larger uh, vote count. Um, it was counted by, uh, the count was uh, tabulated by um, uh, Councillor Andrea Campbell's office and a large uh, majority voted in support. Uh, we support non-opposed uh, side of the ballot. The other side of the ballot was uh, opposed. Thank you. Okay, um, Ms. Ambassador, that covers everybody? Yes, ma'am, thank you. May I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve a BPDA to dine with you, uh, Madam Chair. And to this petitioner only? This petition only, yeah. We, we did is already it? get the BPDA designer, but just- It doesn't just matter, it's matter. just, um, all, is there a second? Second. There's all another the, proviso. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Ms. Better to have a review with the Parks Recreation Department. Yes, because it's a G-Con, okay? We do have that approval. Yeah, all, um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set with those provisos. Good luck. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling DOA 130 8846 784 West Roxbury Parkway. This is a constructed two-story addition to the side of an existing one-family detached dwelling. The addition includes the mudroom, family room, new deck on the first floor at Master Suite on the second floor, a minor layout reconfiguration on the second floor of the existing home. The violation of Article 57, Section 9, insufficient rear yard setback. Name and address for the record, please. Hi, Derek, are you here for this case? Yes, uh, uh, is uh, Anat uh, muted as well? Who, oh, Anat, yes. Anat, 
Can you guys please go ahead? Yes, I'm sorry, it's Derek Rubinoff from Derek Rubinoff Architect at uh, 82 Spring Street in West Roxbury, but uh, Anat Becknockagol should be unmuted as well. She's going to present from our office. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, let's just state okay. your name and address, then up, please. Okay, Anat Becknockagol, 82 Spring Street, West Roxbury. So please go ahead and tell us what's being proposed. Sure, it's a single house in uh, Rosendale and we're actually demolishing one story addition on the side of the house and instead putting a two story addition. Um, so we are violating the oh. rare, I'm sorry. Okay. So actually if you stay on the sheet of the code sheet, it will be very helpful to see what we're doing. Uh, if you go one more sheet down. So basically your building, your proposal is contextual from what I can see from the drawing uh, from the abut to the abutter. Yes, yeah, so if you see on the existing street view and the proposal, yeah. we're demolishing the side addition, the one story side addition and proposing two story addition. Okay. So it's close and, the to the only, and the only violation is your rear yard setback Yes. what is required and what's being proposed okay so if you go to the next sheet and if you see on the site uh site plan it's best. um actually you'll see where it's a corner lot if you scroll down a little bit and stay on the area plan just a little bit down okay perfect uh no <laughs> go down go up again sorry yeah, just stay there. Thank you. Um, okay, so the if you see the big house on the right, on the left we're proposing an addition with rear deck. The addition is pretty much the same footprint of as the previous. It's the same length. It's about uh, 26 feet, and the actual depth to the rear yard is less as as was before. So before it was almost aligned with the existing house. So this is a corner lot. It, it has um, a 60, close to 60 feet lot depth. So definitely a hardship. And the red line that is crossing the middle of the building is literally our rare setback that is um, is shallower than the, the required. So let, let me ask the question again: What is required and what's being proposed? Required to have. So the, the, I'm just going to interrupt for a second. I'm sorry. Uh, it's Derek Rubinoff. Uh, the, the required setback is 23 feet, and what's proposed um, looks to be, from what I can see on the screen there, it looks about 18 feet or so. Is that right, or not? 16 feet, I think. Yeah. 16? Okay. Sorry, the screen, my screen's a little Yeah, and 13 is the existing building. Yeah, okay. so we're, we're actually reducing the nonconformity with, with the proposed addition. And and the driveway is going to continue to be on the West Roxbury Parkway? Yes, it is. It is. There are no changes to the driveway. Okay. How are the plans Ms. Uh, better? Madam Chair, the plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Mm -hmm. Or an opposition? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Julie Juno, Chief of the Municipal Office of Neighborhood Services. We conducted a meeting for this project, and they did reach out to the Bellevue and the Greater Belgrade Ad Neighborhood Associations, and my office received four letters of support for this project. And the meeting was conducted on April 13th. And we would like to defer to the board. Madam Chair, Secretary, we have a few letters of support. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with BPDA design review on the exterior. Is there a second? Second. second. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set with that proviso. Thank you. Yeah. Calling next case, calling BOA 131 Harbor or Road. It's confirm Mark is a one family. Going to be including extension of a raised patio and deck and addition of ground level deck with stairs 
the violation of Article 67, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. Article 67, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. I'm Adam Chair. One more recusal for me on this. Please. Oh, my goodness. You're on a roll today. Okay. Um, please name an address from the applicant. Marissa Roberts. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, hi. My name is Marissa Roberts. I am the owner and occupant of 19 Arbor Road in Roslindale. So tell us what's being proposed. Sure, so I guess you're looking kind of at the bird's eye view plans right there. We currently have an existing, what's called the upper level deck, which is right in the backyard of our home due to the grade. Um, it's first level, but in the back, it's kind of elevated. So what we're proposing is to extend that across the back of the house um, to have a new exit, which is from the center there that you can see in the middle. And then there's essentially we, what we would like to construct as a ground level deck, and that is the setback issue um, that says lower deck. You can see it kind of in the bottom left there. So um, is this um, it does 19 Arboro, uh hit on the commuter rail is that it is does that is our rear, it's our rear butter yes okay so on your side yard what's required and what are you proposing um so i believe it looks like this setback and to tell you there's actually already a structure there um and planting so i believe we are kind of keeping the same side yard setback which is around seven and a half feet and i am sorry um i am the owner and i actually did not get the exact setback from the architect prior to coming to the meeting, so I apologize for being unprepared regarding that, uh, what that requirement is. But essentially, it will be kept, uh, what we're proposing is something that's seven and a half feet from the side. Okay. Um, how are the plans, Ms. Better? Madam Chair, the plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good morning, Dr. Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Lisa Nochi with Mayor's Office of Public Services. We conducted a meeting on April 11th for this project, and my office has received no letters of support or opposition. Um, we did have one neighbor who attended that meeting, um, but they did seem to be in support. We just didn't receive any statements from them. And we would like to refer to the board. Thank you. Um, Ms. Ambassador, anybody else with a raised hand? Chairman uh, of the board. Oh, go ahead. Madam Chairman, support Paul Sullivan for the Council of Life Medical Clarity, Council of Zone Regular Support. And I have no additional raised hands. Thank you. May I have a motion, please? Nope. And Madam Chair, I'd like to put for a motion of approval with BPDA design review. Yeah, Ms. Better, if that's okay, because it backs up to the commuter rail, we'll punt on that one too. <laughs> I don't think they're gonna I don't think they're gonna mind flying by. <laughs> okay, sounds we good. Get it, we get in BPA review. <laughs> is, is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set. Good luck. Thank you very much. On the last case for 1030, calling DOA 129 201630 R Undyne Road. This is the Gifford Cat Shelter. The proposed project is a new 3,650 square foot one story building to replace an existing 1,550 square foot building. This is to add 200 square feet in uh, 200 square feet of ancillary sheds, 12 new archery parking spaces, and a new stormwater recharge system. The violations of Article 51, Section 8, use and regulations, animal hospital, catering, kennel, aborting animal shelter use is forbidden. And Article 51, Section 8, accessory uses from to the main use is forbidden. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Excuse me, good afternoon, and good afternoon to the rest of the board. My name is Jeb Ruccio. Uh, I am an attorney uh, at Mirioni Shaughnessy and Udy. Our business address is at 2 Battery March Park in Quincy. We are here, uh, the shelter is here, seeking relief solely as to use. Specifically, we're seeking a variance to expand a legally existing non-conforming uh, use. That would be a cat shelter. And that use has previously been confirmed by this board as a legally non-conforming use. I would uh, please ask that Lisa Sacchetti be given um, panelist status or unmuted. We plan to have her speak first, uh, but while that's being taken care of, we can have 
Billy Mitchell speak. Uh, he's going to. We honestly, um, you know, we hear all the good stuff about the, about cat shelters and all kinds of good stuff, but we have to recognize that this is a one F five thousand district. Can you talk about the residential use that appears to be in the front of the building, and the proposal for the expansion of the cat shelter in the rear of the building? Tell us if it's all on the same lot. Or if it's two separate lots, I, I understand it to be all on the same lot. And in terms of the the uh, residential structure in front, it is uh, a residential structure and is, uh, as I understand it, currently uh, rented out to tenants. Okay. So if it's all on the same lot, how are you protecting the tenant use from this expanded commercial use in the rear yard? Um, well, the, 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 the tenant's um, space is not being in, infringed upon um, and, uh, you know, there, there is no objection from the tenants. If you would like supporting letters Honestly, from the tenants. No, no, no. I, I'm not interested. Uh, we have to look at it from a long-term use um, and because we understand that once we give approval for a project, it's here essentially in perpetuity and or until the building, something happens to the building. So what we need to understand is that this is a one family zone. There is a one family house that's existing on it that looks like it could use some help, some upgrades in some way. They will be impacted by a commercial use in the rear yard. Um, and so we need to understand how this use will be compatible with not only that residential use, but the abutting residential uses in this residential subdistrict. Uh, understood. And, and I think uh, before turning things over to uh, Mr. Mitchell to, to give you a, a bird's eye view of the project, which will help answer some of your questions, I think it's important to understand the history here. No, we want to go directly to the use because this looks like it's an expansion of a use from 1,550 square feet to 3,650 square feet. So that's close to a, 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 a doubling of use. Correct. And plus ancillary sheds um, and off street parking. So just please talk to us about everything together so we can understand how those residential uses and the abutting residential uses will be protected and of course tell us about the about this uh, shelter uh, of course and i guess what i'm trying to say is a picture's worth a thousand words i think what will best answer your question is to is to run through uh what the pro some project renderings and, and that will show you how little an impact uh of excuse me, how there's only a positive impact on the neighbors um, outside the lot as well as on the, the residential structure that is on the lot. So with that, uh, I would turn things over to Billy Mitchell. He is a uh, member of the firm serving as our owner's project manager. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Billy Mitchell. Uh, I am a member of the owner's project management group that is uh, assisting Gifford on this project with the business address of 152 Middlesex Turnpike, Burlington, Mass. Um, as Jed had talked about, the in, you can see on this slide that we are currently on the rendering. You can see how the uh, perimeter of the site, we are proposing to incorporate a uh, new fence to help shield uh, some of the parking that is going to be increased on the site. Um, in addition, this front area of parking, um, I'm sorry, you can't see my mouse, but uh, that is right directly uh, next to the uh, existing uh, house building up front. That is going to be dedicated for the uh, tenants of the house. Uh, in addition- And how many, how many spaces is that? Um, Jed, can you uh, help clarify that? I believe it's two, but I want to confirm with you, please. Oh, uh, are you talking about spaces? On the layout? Uh, right. Oh, yes. On this site, you can see there's two spaces uh, next to uh, that existing house remain on the plan left side. And how many, uh, how many units in that building? In that residential use? Uh, yes, I, I believe there are two units in that building. Do we, 
Okay, and how many bedrooms? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Lisa Sacchetti may be better positioned to answer these questions. Do, do, does she have panelist status or could she be un unmuted? Okay, what's the name? Thank you. Lisa, Lisa Sacchetti, there we are. Okay, yeah. This is Lisa Sacchetti uh, at, uh, my address is 101 North Beacon Street. Um, so the building up front has uh, one unit in it and uh, that is rented out and also used by people that are uh, helping us just oversee the shelter property. So how many bedrooms? Um, it's two bedrooms. Wait, um, so that existing house that's there is one unit with two bedrooms? We use, um, there's, so let me back up. There's one, there's two bedrooms being used as bedrooms. We actually use it as um, storage. Um, we have in the renovated garage from that building, we currently have an office that we are looking to move into the new building. Okay, so then um, describe to us the new building. Yep, I can jump back in. If we could go back to that uh, bird's eye view plan at the top, please. Uh, so yep, you can see the existing buildings in the dashed area. I'll focus on the proposed building. Uh, that is where you see the proposed one-story building, 3,650 gross square feet. Um, the shelter, the new proposed shelter is going to maintain a similar height of the existing shelter of not being higher than 15 feet. Um, additionally, you can see there's the shed located towards the right side of this plan and the left both remain fairly well hidden from the street uh, if you were standing on Undyne Road. Uh, additionally, there is the mechanical equipment in the back of the shed that will be fenced off, that is that small uh, square towards the rear and that is also hidden from the street and will be even more hidden with uh, the uh, increased um, fencing and then additionally you can if you zoom in you can see the setbacks um, the average uh, of the building is greater than the 40 uh, foot setback however you can see on that bottom right corner of the shelter that is at 30 feet so it meets the setback requirements uh, for the uh, so. so since this is a commercial use in a residential subdistrict, please talk through what the hours of operation are, um, what the hours of operation are. Well, Lisa, could you, you address that? Sure, yep. Yeah. So we, uh, we have, we do not have open hours to the public except for a couple of times a week which are approximately four hour slots on weekends. But generally we're open 10 to six for staff and volunteers um, to come by. So you're open 10 to six Monday through Friday. And what are your weekend hours? Uh, this, uh, open for the public, it's, it's still, t I would say still 10 to six on Monday, to, uh, seven days a week. Seven days a week. Um, Monday to Saturday, Sunday, well, wow. okay. And tell us how many volunteers and how many staff? So we have, I believe, five on-site staff members and uh, five, five full-time equivalent on-site staff members. And we have, I'd say, probably uh, two volunteers a day coming to the shelter two to three volunteers a day come to the shelter. Okay, and um, tell us about how you propose that the abutters are not affected by, um, um, by, the, by the cats, so that there's sound or some kind of... Well, we, yeah, so we've been in the neighborhood for, uh, since 1888 um, and uh, as far to my knowledge, and I've, I've run the board for about 17 years, we've never had a complaint from any neighbor about sound or 
Um, but, you, but you are expanding your facility, so I'm assuming there's an expansion in the number of um, of um, cats that you'll have there? That's correct. And Lisa, could you speak to where the cats are located? Can you tell us what the expansion is? So you're currently operating and hosting certain amount of cats. What is six? expansion going to host now there's there's currently 40 cats in the in, in the shelter building and with the expansion we could accommodate 80 cats and those would all be uh kept inside and and just uh, also on the subject of of uh, sound mitigation we we have um the the plans for our additional equipment um involve equipment that will not be heard off site okay and how about wastes do you refer, refer to cat waste? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, currently we have a private party that picks up uh, trash, and we would be doing the same thing uh, at an increased rate as needed. Okay. Okay. Madam Chair, if I could, in, in, in relation to the, the uh, hours of operation, I just wanted to stress that those, those are open hours, but uh, on average, the facility, uh, I believe, has four um, adopters or visitors per day. So while uh, the, the hours of operation are 10 to 6, uh, there's very little traffic. And do you have vet visits? We have, uh, once a week, we have a vet that comes and does rounds. Generally, we take our cats out to, to vets. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out what the traffic impact is going to be on Undyne. Um, because then you say you have five staff, you have two volunteers, you have waste pickup, and then you have adopters coming through. Um, and that's, and then you have the vet coming in, so just trying to figure out what that impact is going to be. Um, we, have, we have all of that already happening today. I understand, but if you're doubling your capacity, that's going to be, um, you know, a different impact on a, essentially a residential neighborhood, you know? So, um, so anyway, um, how are the plans, Ms. Better? Madam Chair, the plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office likes to defer judgment to the board. Uh, the Mayor's Office held an abutters meeting on March 7th. Um, no serious concerns were raised. We did have a resident reach out to the applicant about some landscaping plans. Um, you know, this facility has been in use in that neighborhood for a long time. Um, they also went to the Brighton Austin Improvement Association received their support as well. The BAI asked that they uh, promote a robust rodent control program. There are some rat issues in that neighborhood, not related to this facility, but hoping that it will exasperate things. Um, and also request that they continue to work with neighbors and keep them informed of, of what's going on. Madam Chair, I would like to note that we do have uh, letters of support. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can I? Uh, I just like to make it clear that when we're receiving testimony, we are purely receiving testimony. Um, may I hear from Maura, please? Good afternoon. Um, the council would like to go on record in support of this project. Thank you. And, um, Annabelle? Madam Chair, members of the board, um, the BIA voted to support the project. Um, I, I do live on Undyne, and we did have some concerns. Um, it's, it's really unclear with this presentation. Are they having one residential unit, two residential units, and how big it is? Because there was never a mention of a residential unit. Um, if there's someone living there now, they haven't caused any problems. If they're related to it, I usually don't see any cars parked there at nighttime. Um, so I guess uh, a little confused on that. Uh, but what the BIA did ask was that they reach out to the neighbor directly next door, 38 Undyne, which I believe they have not done, and that they really do have a robust rodent um, over what's required from the city because we have been 
being dug up by National Grid and that uh, water and sewer for the last two years, and it's going to be probably two more years, wrote it, uh, there's a huge rat problem. The condos in Newton, which are right next to it as well, have a huge rat problem, and they asked that as well. Um, so I guess just a little bit more clarification on the residential and how big it's going to be if they move their office. Thank you. Okay, any other, anybody else, uh, Ms. Ambassador? Oh, no, I have no additional raised hands. Okay, so what I would like the applicants to, um, to respond to is the residential use and, um, and what the plan is for upgrading that residential property, the screening and buffering, and, um, and if you responded to the abutter and any uh, rodent control issues or responses. Madam Chair, I believe there is no change to the residential use. It, the, the one tenant would, would remain the same. In terms of buffering aspects, is there something... Um, Billy, would you be able to, to uh, bring up a slide that, that shows the any buffering such as um, landscaping or fencing between the, the, the new facility and the residential structure? Okay, let's actually, let's just hold off. Um, Here's my question, so, Madam Chair. Okay, go gotta, ahead, yes, go ahead. So we have a residential building up front that is currently being used for some commercial uses inside. They're gonna relocate that to their new building. Yep. What are they gonna, they're gonna just leave that space vacant or are they gonna put so, it in okay, there? Like, so let's, let's just move because I think you raise really important questions. This is what I was trying to get to with my questioning. Let us move directly to um, a motion because it sounds like it needs to be for this petitioner only so that should anything happen to them, this is um, that the residential structure will, will move to purely residential use. No accessory, um, accessory storage office etc that the residential use will be upgraded sounded sounds like there needs to be um, um, screening and buffering plan so that the whole place um, looks is upgraded and it looks like it needs to also have um, rodent control plan to be and that they would need to continue to be in touch with neighborhood with the neighborhood madam chair madam chair can we also have uh, a proviso that talks about um occupancy so that you know up to 80. okay and to cap it at 80. cap at 80 and at, at 80 okay and then so this is a forbidden use in a residential subdistrict so it's causing us, and it's an extension of a non-conforming use. Um, and so, you know, we need to make sure that the residential uses around are protected in whatever way possible. Um, and so uh, is everybody comfortable though with this, um, you know, basically seven day a week, 10 to six operation or should residents just be comfortable that on Sundays or whatever, that they're not going to have um, commercial I mean, use? There's, there's, I mean, there's, there's live animals in there. I feel like there's a need to be in that building seven days a week with live animals in there. Like, okay. I, I, okay. I don't see a way around that. Oh, yeah, okay. Madam Chair, and you've you started to summarize a very long list of provisos. Yep for a forbidden use in a residential neighborhood. Yes. Um, and, and is that um, neighborhood outreach? Is that, um, does that cover everything? Yeah, I, I mean, I still would like to get a better understanding of the existing residential structure in front and what I'm, that is. I'm, what that I'm, is. I'm hoping that through design review, um, that we will we will make sure that that residential building in the front stays as purely residential use, whether if it's because and they've they've 
represented that it's one unit, that, that it's not two units in that building. Okay, um, just, okay. Can there be, can there be a, a limit put forward in terms of just assessing within a year that residents are, are happy, that rodent control is being maintained? Could there be kind of a report? Okay. Okay, so let me see if I get this right. So it's the dispetitioner only capped its approval for design review. To this petitioner only capped at 80 animals um, that the residential use be upgraded and confirmed as a one one unit that there will be um, screening and buffering there be a neighborhood plan i mean there'll be a rodent plan neighborhood outreach and a touch base with this board one year from occupancy. Does that cover everything? Yes. Okay, so may I have that motion? Um, um, so moved. moved. Is there a second? Barraza, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I oppose. I oppose the motion. Ligris. Okay, motion carries. Um, so please, we ask you to be continue to be good neighbors with your expansion. Okay, good luck. Thank you very much. Thank calling you. the next case, calling VOA 122 4194 200 High Street. This is a change of occupancy to a cannabis establishment. The violations Article 45, Section 14, cannabis establishment use is conditional. Article 45, Section 14, the location forbidden buffer zone conflict proposed within 2,640 feet of another cannabis establishment. Name and address for the record, please. Hello, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is Mike Ross from Prince Lavelle, One International Place. I'm here with the um, one of the owners of High Street Cannabis, Marie St. Floor. Uh, this is a social equity and Boston equity applicant. Um, <clears throat> the relief we're seeking today is for uh, an adult use uh, cannabis establishment, which is a conditional use uh, within this particular location of the city, uh, as well as a um, variance for the buffer zone uh, half mile that was just referenced. Let me just start with the actual dispensary, if I could, Madam Chair. Uh, and uh, the, I do believe there's an updated, um, Madam Ambassador, uh, more updated version uh, of the plans. I mean, we could make this work, but um, the, the, the latest ones might be more, you know. That's all right, we'll, we'll make this work, uh, members of the board. Um, what, what, so what we have here is, um, if you know, the, the, the other image was going to show you that if you can think about this location, um, the green way is at the bottom of your screen, but it's not, it's, there's a giant block of retail, I think it's a Panera bread that's there right now, between us and, uh, and the green way. So you can't see this from the green way. It's, uh, the main entrance is on the right on High Street. And through that community process, while this does span all the way across to Broad Street, we've shut down the Broad Street entrance on the left of your screen. So what you have is the more narrow high, high street uh, um, street that shows uh, access uh, to this facility, um, not even at the main entrance of the building, but a secondary entrance to this building. No residential uh, on High Street. There is residential on Broad Street. Broad Street will, will remain as a uh, an area for um, uh, just delivery for, for delivery and personnel entrance only, but will be shut off. You can see a little hatched area over there on Broad Street on the left side. That now is going to be a little area for uh, community use. Um, the local nonprofit that wants to use that uh, for an office that will have its own distinct entrance, and it will not be part of the cannabis establishment. Just returning to that high street entrance there, um, there's a man trap to get in. Uh, there will be security at the man trap. And so, um, Councillor, I'm trying to understand. So this is a basement use or is it a ground floor use? It's ground floor. There is a basement. The updated plan that I had for you uh, removed that little note that said um, stairs going to the basement for overflow. Uh, this, uh, this is employee area only. This will be used for lockers, bicycles, that kind of stuff. Um, the, the basement is not open to the public. 
the public facing area, it, it all in is um, 1,500 square feet. It's a smaller, you know, it's not a giant area at all. And then if you go up though to the next, uh, to, the, to the slide above that, you can see what I'm talking about. It comp it's comprised of that uh, check-in area uh, that you see in that box kind of by the door on High Street. And then just behind that check-in area, which has its own separate entrance, separate exit, is the, um, we see the points of sale systems along the side of the wall. And you see the, um, uh, just the showroom area. So yeah, that's really the, the, main, the main area. Uh, and there. what are the proposed hours of operation? Yeah, the proposed hours of operation um, are uh, Monday through Sunday, 9, uh, 9, PM to, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., about 12 to 15 employees per shift. Um, <clears throat> I, I did want to talk, if I could, because I know that it comes up in other conversations about the uh, buffer zone. If I could, it's the last slide, and, and it's just four very quick points, um, if I may. It's the last slide, Madam Ambassador, there. You can just zoom out. It comes down to, to, to four reasons. One would be population. Um, downtown Boston is the, one of the busy, so, one of the- So I, I, what I'd like to know from you is how far is it from any, from the other cannabis uh, location? Yeah, in the Wharf District Council, um, there, are, there are two other, uh, in the Wharf District area, rather, uh, there are two other dispensaries. Uh, 150 State Street, which is 1,584, uh, feet away from us, um, and then 21 Broad Street, which is 1,500 feet away from us. Uh, 21 Broad Street, rather small footprint, 600 square feet. 150 State Street, rather small, 1,000 square feet. Neither are open today. And the point we were making is that the demand of this part of the city will well exceed uh, the certain the resources that are there and similar to what you see with the hotel market there on that slide and even the on-premise liquor licenses there on that slide there is a concentration of commercial activity in the downtown area that will support uh, multiple uh, dispensaries uh, in this case um, uh, we're we're taking a nod from the legislation of both the state and the city which refers to the public need in this so, case so, so if if i can backtrack for a minute so your argument is that um there are two um facilities in proximity within this 20 2600 2640 square feet i mean feet but they're both small small facilities and this too is a uh, small facility and that there is enough of a demand given that it is our downtown. That's one of the points, Madam Chair, yes. Okay. Yes, and then there were just kind of three other really quick ones. Public need is it's enshrined in the legislation. Uh, it's meant to look towards the liquor legislation. So public need is something that should be considered. Uh, equity, equity is not, I mean, Marie St. Fleur is on this call. She can do a better job of explaining that. But the legislation was intended to not relegate equity applicants to the edges of the, you know, that's why we've seen Back Bay. That's why we've seen Fenway. That's why we've seen downtown got it, got at the it. discretion of this board. On Thank a case by case basis, not everyone goes through, but case by case basis, we've seen that. And then finally is the uniqueness of this location. On the call with us today is one of the owners. His name is Gosder Cherlis. He's a former professional NFL football player. He, uh, more than anyone, has experienced uh, how cannabis has helped him in recovery and in so wellness. So this is going to be recreational and medical then? It's gonna be recreational, right. Madam Chair, but the analogies are the same. In order to provide wellness support to our customer base, Gosder Chairless, you know, comes from being banged up on, in the NFL, has learned from uh, treatment uh, using the cannabis and so okay. he is going to send that kind of so Mr. Uh, Ross you might feel Councillor Ross thank you, thank you. Um, let me ask Miss Better how are the plans Madam Chair the plans are adequate any questions from the board yeah I I you know I I, I happen to agree with you Mr. Ross about the the difference between downtown I wish the city had never imposed the buffer zone because all it has done is created confusion chaos and total 
total uh, havoc. Um, you have clearly demonstrated there's a public need for Dunkin' Donuts in the area. <laughs> and um, for liquor stores. <laughs> yeah, liquor stores. Um, and I, 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 this just, I just throw my hands up at this point. The, the, the buffer zone discussion is utterly pointless at this point. Thank you, Mr. O. Any other questions? Any other, look, any questions from the board? We got a comment. Any questions? Is it is anybody no here? To, okay. Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition? No applicants, please. Just um, um, or, or or whatever. So let's just uh, get to the testimony. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office like to defer judgment to the board. Some information on the community process. Uh, they completely completed the community process, received a letter of support from the Warp District Council, and also a letter of non opposition from Council President uh, Flynn. With that, we return to the board. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Alde Chair, members of the board. Anna Calderon from Council President Flynn's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support. This proposal has received support from the Wharf District Council and the proponent has conducted a good community process. They are committed to work with the neighbors and the Wharf District Council as they operate and will work to maintain their character of the community. They have also indicated that they are committed to ensuring that the neighborhood that they are in continues to be safe, healthy, and inviting to residents and visitors alike. Moreover, the Worth District Council and the High Street Cannabis Group have, has entered into a good neighbor agreement with, which will remain in effect if the business were to be sold or transferred within the five year period. As such, the councilor is, is offering his support for the proposal. It should be also noted that the High Street Cannabis Group is an equity applicant that is well respected in Boston and it is critical to continue working closely with equity applicants in this field, along with women and minority-owned small businesses. Thank you. Ms. Ambassador? Okay, one second, I'm sorry. Um, sorry. Uh, Michael, sorry. Yeah, I sent a request to unmute you. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? I'll go to Darren. Okay, yes, can you state your name and address for the record, please? Uh, Darren Moylan. Okay. I'm at 141 Pearl Street in Boston. <clears throat> We've been a property owner and a business owner of uh, Biddy Early's restaurant for 25 years. I'm in strong <clears throat> support of the applicant at this location. It's a really densely populated area, downtown area, and we feel like multiple cannabis businesses could would uh, drive more foot traffic into the area. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Suzanne? Suzanne Lavoie, 85 East India Row. Uh, Executive Director of the Wharf District Council. The council voted to support this um, uh, cannabis location and uh, the council speaks for the residential condominium associations and businesses surrounding the uh, dispensary. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the Blakes. Madam Chair, members of the board, my name is Luigi Natali from Representative Aaron Michaelitz's office. Oops, sorry, you've been, you've been unmuted. Sorry about okay. that. Uh, yeah. Madam Chair, members of the board, my name is Luigi Natali from Representative Aaron Michaelitz's office. We are in full support of this project. Thank you. Uh, and then, Michael, going back to you, can you hear us? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Uh, yep, go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, Michael Colentro, uh, business address of 115 Broad Street, uh, owner of Tremont Construction Management, based at that location. Uh, just real quick, uh, just wanted to uh, express support uh, witness firsthand the positive impact visitors and commuters have on this neighborhood. Um, I think the neighborhood can support multiple dispensaries. I fully support this uh, uh, this applicant um, and the black and brown owned equity applicant at this location. Thank you. Thank you. And Madam Chair, I have no additional raise hands. Okay, may I have a motion, please? 
Motion to approve uh, with the usual proviso for this applicant only. Um, and do we need design review on this, Jeff? No. No, right? No, we don't no. need it. No, <laughs> signage Sorry. will come to us, but we don't need okay. anything. And uh, so this applicant only, um, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. You're all set with that proviso. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you, members of the board. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling POA 125 2505 166 to 168 Salem Street. This is a change of art from eight unit residential and one store building to a nine unit residential dwelling and extend living space into the basement, construct new rear decks. Violation of Article 54, Section 10, floor day ratio is excessive. Article 54, Section 21, off street parking is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Greg McCarthy for 166 Salem. <clears throat> Tell us what's being proposed, please. Sure, we have an existing uh, nine-unit building um, that's currently eight, eight residential units and one commercial unit. Um, <clears throat> the commercial unit used to be a club, um, which hasn't been used in some time. So we are proposing to change it from uh, eight residential and one commercial to nine residential. Um, <clears throat> we don't have any way to provide a parking spot for that nine unit. Oh, um, uh, so tell us um, the square footage of this proposed um, additional unit and whether or not it's in the basement. So there's a, uh, it's a duplex. It's on the first floor and in the basement. Um, the square footage is about 900 square feet. Um, so it has a uh, one bedroom and a kitchen and living on the first level and then a kind of a second living room and a uh, office in the uh, basement level. So it's basically a, and tell us about the floor to ceiling height in the basement. It's uh, 94 inches minus another, uh, sorry, nine foot four inches minus another uh, 10 inches. So it's gonna be right about eight and a half feet. Okay, and um, Okay, um, how are the plants, Miss Better? Madam Chair, the plants are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support or in opposition of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office, Neighborhood Services. This time we'll defer judgment to the board. I'm sorry, it looks like this was added late. It wasn't on the agenda that we had initially, so I don't have any notes for this. Thank you. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval. Is there a second? Second, Ligris. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set. Good luck. Thank you very much. Calling the next case, calling VOA 123 9778 50 Clap Street. <clears throat> this is a expanding the existing medical marijuana treatment center to incorporate adult use sales. Violations, Article 65, Section 15. This is in. Cannabis established as a conditional and a CC. No, I never got, well, I got, I never got called for it. I'm sitting here, um, said the Blakes, but talking about Clap Street now, I guess it got approved, right? So anybody who's calling in from the Blakes number, can you please mute yourself? We can hear you. That's okay. It's going to happen, right? Are you here to speak for this on Clap Street? <laughs> I'll be able to go get my edibles for helping me to sleep. But hold no on, problem. hold on, hold on. Can you please hold on? Can you somebody mute her, please? Can we hear from the applicant on Clap Street? <laughs> Hello, Madam Chair. This is Mike Ross. <laughs> okay. Sorry for the You're welcome. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Really no control uh, over that. But uh, here to speak. Are you ready yeah. for me? Did the secretary read it all into the record? Uh, I did, Mr. Ross. I'm just waiting for uh, comedy relief to relieve. <laughs> okay. 
Madam Chair, did you want me to go or? Yes, please, Mr. Ross, tell us the what you're, what's being proposed. Sure, sure. Uh, so this is Mike Ross. Uh, I'm here with Dan Linsky, who's our security consultant. This is 50 Clap Street. Again, this might look familiar as well to the uh, uh, board in that in uh, 2018, the board granted medical approval. That's a picture right there of, of it today. Uh, medical approval uh, for the uh, for the facility. We are now here for a use only um, designation by the board to allow for the adult use component at 50 Clap Street. Um, what you're seeing in this photo right here is uh, basically an 8,700 square foot lot. It's a two-story building, which is about 6,000 square feet. The sales area is exclusively on the first floor and will remain on the first floor. And how many uh, square feet is that? It's approximately 1,200 square feet. That's a good image right there, the floor plan on the right. Uh, it's, it's about 1,200 square feet, not including the vestibule, uh, which is just about 400 and the fulfillment area right there. Um, so what you see here, let me orient you. Uh, the main entrance to this facility is at the bottom of your screen and it's accessible off of Clap Street, which is at the top of your screen by that sidewalk. Um, there is also a side entrance on the way to the back that you can see in the left side of that plan. And that's, uh, no, I'm sorry, on the left side of just that plan, yeah, on the right. And that door right there is an accessible door that our security person uh, could, you know, could access and go through as well, or you could go through uh, the, bottom, the bottom of the screen. Um, deliveries will be made random at the time. Uh, the proposed current hours of operation today and going forward uh, are Monday through Saturday. This is the current hours from 9 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. And on Sunday, we're, they're open from 11 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. And those are intended to remain. Uh, these are uh, renderings of the um, uh, elevations. Uh, and the lower right-hand uh, elevation right there is, that's that back entrance uh, at the back at the back of the building. Um, that is, you know, you kind of walk around and you get over there uh, from there. Uh, there's also two public restrooms. As the board might know, uh, medical does require uh, restrooms to be uh, on site. Uh, it's not required for adult use, but those will remain. As I mentioned, there's no actual changes uh, to the work. It's just the Can use. Tell us about the parking, please. Yep, um, there are nine parking spaces on site. The uh, site plan above is actually a better um, image yeah, right there on the left. Um, these are nine parking spaces uh, that are available to our customer uh, customers. Clap Street also has um, currently undesignated parking uh, along Clap Street. We have a commitment for none of our employees to park in any of the uh, parking spaces uh, on site or on even Clap Street itself. And we incent our employees to use public transit uh, to get to get there. We currently are um, seeing about 50 patients a day when, when averaged out um, across the year. Um, we anticipate probably around 100 uh, patients and customers uh, coming to the facility um, at the uh, uh, once we're open for adult use. I can pause there, Madam Chair, and answer any questions. Um, are you finding that your week, is there a difference between your weekend and your weekday um, visits? Uh, that's a great question. I, I do have uh, members of the team who uh, could answer that uh, in terms of what they're seeing. Um, I don't know if um, either uh, Joseph could raise his hand or David could raise his hand. Uh, they can answer that question for you. Uh, I think the busiest days are Friday, Madam Chair. Um, there is activity on the weekend, but you know it's spread out throughout the course of the day, so it's really not uh, at any one uh, at any one peak time. Friday, Friday after work, it's probably the busiest for the facility. So, Miss Better, you have a probably an amazing, given that this is our third our third cannabis establishment have lots of experience today in looking at cannabis uh, plans. How are the plans? Um, the plans are adequate. I just had a question about accessibility, the parking accessibility. Um, is there, um, typically they're closer to the building where like almost the compact is? Yeah. 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 The, um... can, can you speak of that or at least 
but potentially you'll have to do patching, you know, on the floor to connect to the building. Yeah, yeah. The um, the ADA site uh, is that uh, number one on the plan there, and it's closest. As I mentioned, the the actual entrance is at the rear of the building, so it is the closest to the uh, to the entrance of the building. Okay. And so I would just encourage you to extend the pa the pattern to the building. Oh, I see. I see your point. Yep. Okay. okay. Great. Now everything is is good. Is adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes, um, Madam Chair, members of the board, George Wynn with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office hosted a community outreach meeting on the fifth of last year. The establishment, the establishment has operated successfully with medical sales since January 2021. The applicant has satisfied all parts of Community outreach, including a robust uh, community benefits package, and the BCB, the Boston Cannabis Board, voted in January uh, of this year to grant the petition for the addition of recreational cannabis sales. And our, our office has received letters of support. At this time, we would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McEachern, City Councilor, Frank Baker's office would like to go in uh, record of support. And Travis, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address for the record? Hi, Travis Stewart, 8 St. Margaret Street, Dorchester. I'm part of the McCormick Civic Association, the John, Do John W. McCormick Civic Association, and the neighbor. Um, they've been a great um, a great neighbor. They've lived up to everything they've said they would do in our when we approved them at the Association for Medical. So we are in support of them doing the recreation. Thank you. And Ben Murphy, go ahead. This is Ben Murphy from the New Market Business Improvement District. I'd like to echo the previous comments that the applicant has been an excellent neighbor and a community member. Uh, and so we are strongly in support of this project. Okay. Madam Chair, I have no additional response. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, look, I'd like to put for a motion of approval. Uh, can, can we uh, again to this the, only. And, and it looks like that's a pretty barren building can we have some screening and buffering at the street edge because I see a plans to propose that yes madam uh, chair is there a second? second I'll second with the addition of the screening and buffering liquors all those in favor aye, aye. any opposed Motion carries. You're all stuck with those provisos. Good luck. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Fortune, are you having technical difficulties? Madam Chair, can you hear me? 
You okay? Yes. Okay. I was not able to vote on the last one, but I was able to listen to everything. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have definitely have a technical difficulties here, but okay. I also I was in support. Thank you. Um, are these temporary technical difficulties? In other words, do we need to um, um, defer all the other cases to the next? Another I'll defer it to uh, council in the room. Thank you. It just keeps crashing over and over again when we try to use it, so I don't know. It's lost. We can uh, we can log back out and give it a couple of minutes if we want to take like a quick break and see if we can get it working again. And then move it back. Okay, I'm um since we do and, and I'm just sorry for this, but um I gotta figure out the call here. Um, we may need to postpone back to a later date because we are already late on the schedule. Um, we need to find a date because the cost of you will be here and when you can set um, documents better too. Okay? Um, so are you guys on, Tom? Here, Spanager. Uh, are you guys on? So let's go with Norton Street. I, Madam, I mean, Madam, do you want me to read? I mean, I can read them into the record. Oh, you have access? Yeah, well, why don't you do that? Uh, but you know, the issue becomes then we become a six member board, um, especially, well, um, yeah, is anybody going to be recusing themselves or not? <coughs> okay, so let's go, Mr. Ruggiero, read it. Uh, calling case BOA 1249024 Norton Street. There's a companion case BOA 1319681 Norton Street. Uh, for 8 Norton Street, violations, uh, Article 65, Section 2, con conformity with an existing building alignment, modal, not provided to verify compliance, Article 65, Section 41, off-street parking requirements, uh, Article 65, Section 9, lot area, lot area ratio insufficient, Article 65, Section 9, lot width insufficient, Article 65, Section 9, lot frontage insufficient, Article 65, Section 9, floor area, ra ra floor area ratio excessive, Article 65, Section 9, Building Height, Excessive in Stories. Article 65, Section 9, Side Yard Insufficient. And for 10 Norton Street, uh, Article 65, Section 41, Off-Street Parking Requirements, Driveway is shared with 8 Norton Street. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Baranti. I'm an attorney with the business address 350 West Broadway in South Boston. <clears throat> Madam Chair, members, the property owner here is Selwyn Eccles, who lives in Unit 1 at 10 Norton Street and owns the lot at 8 Norton Street. I was retained by Mr. Eccles' agent and contractor for the purposes of today's hearing. What's being proposed is an extension of living space into the basement of 10 Norton Street uh, while also confirming its occupancy as a three-family dwelling, uh, as well as a new three-story, three-family dwelling at 8 Norton Street, which is currently being used for parking. The, so, uh, I'd like Ryan, to, Mr. Mm -hmm. Ryan, can you back up? What is the zoning district here? This is a 3F5000, Madam Chair. And is this to combine lots, or are they going to go ahead as separate lots? No, they're, they're in common ownership, but it, it would, uh, the, the, the owner is not selling. He's going to remain at the property, so they're going to remain uh, separate lots uh, with the shared driveway. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's go Sure, I'd like to start with 10 Norton Street because as I say, this uh, went through community process. Um, I wasn't participating in that. So that the current plans do show an extension of living space into the basement, uh, which as proposed would include a bedroom. Uh, I've explained the board's position with respect to basement living space and my client understands what that means in terms of a possible board proviso should this be approved. Uh, the unit in question is the owner's unit. Uh, but again, uh, there is basement living space as proposed, including a bedroom. The two zoning violations for 10 Norton Street uh, owe simply to the shared driveway 
and the dimensions of the three parking spaces proposed in the rear, which are seven feet by 18 feet. And again, they're in the, in the, uh, in the rear yard behind the building. Uh, a new three-story, three-family building is being proposed for eight Norton Street. There would be three two-bedroom units of approximately 1,250 square feet each, again with three parking spaces in the rear, which are also cited for dimensional compliance as they are seven by 18. The lot is 3,128 square feet, uh, whereas a 5,000 square foot lot is required. But I would point out that this lot is actually larger than 10 Norton Street, uh, where there is the existing three family, and it's fairly typical for the neighborhood. Uh, there is a violation for insufficient lot width. Again, while fairly typical for the district of 37 feet, uh, the requirement is 50. There's a building height violation owing to story height only. This is a two and a half story, 35 foot district, uh, but there are many other three story buildings in the area. There's sighted side yard setback violations. The left side setback is just over three feet while the right lot line is part of the shared driveway. A rear setback of 22 feet is required here and there is a cited violation, but I point out that the rear wall of the building is at a minimum 25 feet from the rear lot line, but the rear egress stairs do project into that setback area. With respect to the confirmation of occupancy of 10 Norton Street as a three family, uh, it has been taxed as such uh, for many, many years and I point out that it was actually approved as a three-family on a confirmation of occupancy application approved by the Board of Appeal in 1988. My assumption is that for whatever reason that permit was not pulled and uh, expired. Finally, um, there's a proposed side entry shown in the driveway area, um, which would be uh, is being proposed to serve the basement living space, which may or may not survive. Uh, but I think that that uh, proposed side entry would need to be eliminated owing to its impingement on the shared driveway. Otherwise, the driveway width would be uh, just over 12 feet. There's an existing curb cut that is somewhat oversized that would be relocated to a standard width, width curb cut serving both properties. With that, I'll pause and take any questions that members may have. Um, yeah, uh, let's just ask about that. Um basement unit what's uh, basement space what's the floor to ceiling height in there and the floor to cell height at 10. that i'm not certain madam chair i'm looking at the plans as i said when i when i did review the plans uh it was my assumption that the board would certainly strike any proposed bedroom uh and uh, there would be no building code relief granted of course uh, if any of the uh, proposed living space down there were to were to survive uh, should the building be approved okay madam chair there's um there the rear elevation doesn't really show the access to the basement door it only shows the first floor okay how and uh, how are the plans miss better the, the drawings are okay <laughs> okay so the basement it, is submerged majority right. got it is uh, any questions from the board? Well, so Ms. Ms. Barraza, are there uh, there's two means of uh, access, egress in the basement? Well, yeah, so there's one going to the first floor on the interior stair, and then there's one supposedly leading out, but what you just saw in the rear elevation, it doesn't show, it's almost, it, it must be um, like excavated, but it's not showing on this rear elevation. So it's completely submerged then? Submerged, yep. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition? And we're taking both cases at 8 and 10 Norton Street. Good afternoon, member chairs and members of the board. Denise DeSantos from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. I would like to put on record that the applicant has met with the association a few different times and met with the Butters back in October of last year. The community and the Butters did support this proposal. The community did want to see more ownership in the neighborhood. At this time, our office would like to defer any judgment to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. Thank you. Yeah, Secretary here. Um, looks like we're back. Thank you, Mr. Ruggiero, for stepping in. Uh, we do have those letters in the mayor's office, both of them. OK, 
Okay, um, Mr. Master, there's nobody else. May I have a motion on 8 Norton, please? I would uh, make a motion to approve BPDA design review on no living space in the basement. So this is for 8 Norton, which is the construction of a three family building with parking spaces. And so this one is approved. Is there a second? Second. All second. those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, now this is 10 Morton, which wants to extend, propose extending space into the basement. Oh, okay, you want to do it? Well, then I'm, I'm going to make a motion to deny. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Madam Chair, may any, I interject after the vote? Any, uh, any, I do have something important to say. Any opposed? Motion carries. Go ahead, Mr. Madam, Murphy. If I may, on 10 Norton Street, it's actually two purposes to the, actually uh, sort of three, uh, more than one purpose <laughs> to, the, uh, to the application. Shared driveway is part of that application. Uh, the parking in the rear is part of that application and the confirmation of, of uh, three family occupancy uh, is part of that for, application. For, for, for 8 Norton is the erect a three family building. Okay. Correct. Oh, With see. no proposal so, in the so space. You're, the talk, you're talking for 10 Norton, for, sorry, for 10 Norton. Um, so I think the, so the, so, okay. So for 10 Morton, Sorry, 10 Norton, I, it's, I would, denial, would, it's denial for extension into basement. Well, and it's, um, is, it, is it approval for um, um, confirming the occupancy as a three family? Madam Chair, can I, can I with, withdraw the motion I made and make a new motion, which is for approval uh, for the, for the ap application, but a denial on the extension of living space into the basement? Okay, got it. Uh, uh, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Following the next case, calling VOA 1212750, 750 High Park Avenue. This is a razor roof, 10 feet, installed on underground sewer, demo, and interior. This is a change of art from a repair shop and tow lot to a car wash. The violations, Article 67, Section 8. Use and regulations are conditional. Article 67, Section 9, insufficient side yard setback. Article 67, Section 9, insuff insufficient rear yard setback. Article 9, Section 2, a change in the non conforming use. And Article 9, Section 1, extension of non conforming dimensional side yard. Name and address for the record, please. Candida, are you on for this call? I sent a request to unmute you. Yes, I am. Okay, go ahead. Can you state your name and address for the record? Are you here to give testimony or is this your, are you the applicant? No, I'm here to oppose to the car wash. Oh, okay, hold on. I don't see Mr. Mister. on. Okay, let's hold on to this and move to the next project. Yeah, hold on, Madam Chair. Calling the next case, calling DOA 126 1958 59 Dunboy Street. This is an extension of living space, the renovation of a two family, in addition, and extend living space into the attic. Violation of Article 9, Section 1, extension of non conforming use, and Article 51, Section 9. Insufficient side job setback. Name and address for the record, please. Is the applicant on for this? Andrew's hand is up. Andrew, sorry, Andrew, I sent a request to unmute you. Are you here to help with this proposal? 
Yes. G good afternoon, members of the board. Can everyone hear me at this point? Are you here for Dunboy Street? Yes, I am. Okay, please put your name and address on the record and tell us what's being proposed. Good afternoon, members of the board. My name is Andrew Falkenstein. I'm a registered architect with a business address at 7 Kent Street in Brookline, Massachusetts. We are here today to request relief on two items. Number one, extension of a non-conforming use, and number two, insufficient side yard setback. The nature of the project is that we would like to finish an existing unfinished attic and we would be constructing a staircase up to this attic and finishing approximately 550 square feet of the attic for use as a bedroom suite. Um, Let's backtrack for a minute. Um, what's the zoning district that this is in? This is a 1F5000 zoning district. And what's the current occupancy? The current occupancy is a grandfathered two-family. This is, this exists as a this has existed as a rental two-family for many many years. And uh, tell us about the bedroom count in each unit. Yes, as proposed, each unit would have three bedrooms. Okay, and is there occupancy in the basement? There is no occupancy in the basement, and there will be no occupancy in the basement. Okay, and tell us about this unit, this attic area. How many square feet is this proposed to be? Yes, this attic area, right there, if you, if you, if you zoom in, that, that's the area right there on that sheet. Um, this, as you can see, is the rear section of the house. It's actually the rear 23 and a half feet of the house, and it's set back 27 feet from the, from the, front, from the front gable elevation. So what we would be doing is raising the ridge where, where the roof is shaded a total of two foot six inches, just popping it up a little bit, two foot six, in order to get the head height we need to finish this, this existing attic for bedroom use. And, and, again, and how many square feet would that be in total? 550 square feet. And so this unit would be, the sec, um, would be a three bedroom unit all together, okay? Yes. How, how are the plans, Miss Better? Madam Chair, the plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with Mayor's Office and Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer judgment to the board. Uh, some background information on the community process. Our office held two abutters meetings. Uh, initially, residents were more concerned with uh, proposed parking in the rear of the property, as well as some uh, water runoff issues. Um, with the second abutters meeting, the applicant worked to reduce that number of parking spaces in the rear down to three, I believe. Um, also agreed to work with neighbors on some screening and buffering um, that was amenable to them and proposed putting in a French ditch to uh, prevent any water runoff from impacting neighbors in the rear. Uh, they went on to the Brighton Alston Improvement Association, which gave their support. Um, with the BAI would, wanted to request uh, PPDA design review, and uh, we've not heard from neighbors uh, since those conversations. So we would encourage the app to continue to talk to neighbors. With that, we defer back to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, don't have any raised hands at the moment. Um, Jeff, was, did the BPDA have a recommendation on this? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, we did. Hold on just a second. This went to Thursday night, so let me just pull up my records here. I believe it was approval with design review, but don't hold me to I'm almost positive it was. Okay. Um, hold on just a second, please. Because I think we were concerned with the uh, the ridge line. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, okay. Yeah, just five nineteen fifty nine. Yes, Madam Chair, we approval with the proviso that plans for any exterior changes be submitted to us for design review, especially with the ridge line. Okay. 
Given that information, um, it sounds like it's um, the, the concern is the ridge line, the screening and buffering, and that the parking lot be um, deal. Or there might there must be some pervious materials used um, to prevent flooding. Does that seem to cover everything? Yes, it does. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with a dis with proviso. One is BPDA design review on the exterior, paying special attention to the ridge. Two is to have screening and buffering, and three is to have pervious surface. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, let's go, uh, please, Mr. Fortune, back to Hyde Park. Yeah, I'm just gonna ask if Hyde Park's on the, on the line. Do we have anybody that's representing 750 High Park Avenue? I'm here. Okay. Are you, are you, are you sorry, are you the abutter or are you the applicant? No, I would be on opposition to the fair wash. Okay, so is the applicant here? Madam Amen. Chair, it's now 136. I'm gonna make a motion for denial without prejudice. Is there a second? Second, Ligrist. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, Madam Chair, I'm going to call the call of the chair for the 12 o'clock for the Erickson cases. I'm just going to call the purpose. I'll call each one of the ones and I'll do the purpose. Uh, you have case BOA 1295864, the 6R Erickson. The companion case is BOA 1295771, 8R Erickson. Case BOA 1295867, 18R Erickson. And BOA 1295870 20R Erickson. At the hearing on this matter, the applicant satisfied the board that it had met the requirements to receive the necessary zoning relief for this project. However, the board felt that the public benefit from further information, from the applicant turned its plans to public access amenities at the waterfront, as well as further information about parking and transportation on the site. <laughs> to satisfy the proviso included, when the board rendered its decision, the applicant is returning to the board solely to, rep to present this additional information to members of the public who wish to learn more about the project. And add that for the record, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm Jay Eigerman of the law firm of Ruben Junius and Rose with an address at 112 Water Street. With me are Quinlan Locke from the developer, uh, Rise Together, and Kevin Diebler from Rody. All three of us are here. Uh, we submitted a letter, um, and key to that letter are several slides. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go to those. Maybe we could go to the first exhibit, please. Yes, thank you. This one's quite dry, but uh, this is about the transportation and the uh, trip generation, just to get you get the board oriented on the uh, order of magnitude. Uh, in the weekday, worst case scenario, AM peak, you're looking at about 76 vehicles in and out, and in the PM 88, what's driving that are, uh, to uh, remind you, 120 rental residential units, a small local retailer, 3,600 square feet, and then there's about uh, 36,000 square feet of office, and much of that is community space. If we go to the next slide, please. This is a satellite picture, um, and it's a good way to uh, get into the transportation. Uh, everything is going to be buttoned up and uh, put into a TAPA, Transportation Access Plan Agreement, which is a binding agreement between the developer and the BTD Transportation Department. Uh, but in the course of the last five years, uh, uh, we've already made many commitments, and we already know what's going to go into that agreement. And I'll summarize them as I did in the letter. Uh, first, uh, as many of you know, DCR, which is the Department of Conservation and Recreation, and uh, Mass DOT are working on Morrissey Boulevard to the left off the screen. And so we have an obligation to coordinate with them on what their findings are for the large scale uh, redesign of that boulevard and make sure it meshes with what happens here in Port Norfolk. In addition, 
um, we're obligated uh, to pilot a shuttle service. I think we mentioned that, that I mentioned that in March. Shuttle service is going to run for at least a year in order to collect sufficient data on demand in the neighborhood, not just our project, but in the neighborhood. And that's going to run weekdays, both morning and evening. Um, and uh, the idea is to go to the JFK UMass Red Line Station. So that's an important component of this project. And at the end of that year, it will be evaluated by city staff, including BTD, to decide what to do next, whether to continue it, uh, discontinue it, or change it in some way. So sorry uh, to interrupt. So that is peak, peak, peak hours, essentially? Yes, ma'am, peak hours. Okay. Okay. Peak hours, morning and evening on weekdays, peak hours. Okay. Uh, another important uh, requirement is there's going to have to be improvements to six intersections. You can see three of them on the screen here. So along uh, Erickson Street at the intersections with Lolly, Port Norfolk, and Walnut, and then off the screen where they hit, I believe it's Water Street. So in those six inter intersections, the developer is going to have to uh, put in stop or yield control signage as needed, uh, make sure all the crosswalks are restriped, handicapped ramps, um, and there may be areas where the sight lines can be improved. So with city approval and input from the neighborhood, they may change the parking, get some cars away from the approaches, but that's not been determined yet. That's another responsibility. Um, another responsibility is so-called slow streets program. So uh, BTD and BPDA staff uh, are having our project spearhead a so-called slow street study of the whole Port Norfolk neighborhood. So we're gonna have to uh, scope that uh, with staff, collect data, take input from the neighborhood so there will be neighborhood outreach. And the purpose of the slow street study is to see whether there are additional improvements that can be made. For example, Lolly and uh, 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 Walnut are two-way right now and are expected to continue to be two-way. Fort Norfolk is one-way northbound and is expected to continue. But through the slow street study, it may be determined that there are alterations that should be made. Uh, okay, but so let me, let me just ask a question. So this slow street study, is this anticipated to begin when the building is up or is it, uh, when is it anticipated to begin? No, my understanding is it will begin before the building is up. So uh, it will, it'll be, the trigger will, will probably be within a certain amount of time of signing the TAPA. So we'll be going right back to the community uh, in the coming months, long before any of the buildings are completed. Okay. Um, there's also, as you might expect for any large project, there is gonna be a, a, a transportation demand management program. I, I don't need to go over all of that, but for the benefit of the public, 25% uh, of all the parking spaces, and there are 115 indoor spaces, uh, will be electric vehicle uh, uh, charging. And then the rest of them have to be EV ready if it, in the future there is sufficient demand. Uh, okay, now I can stay on this slide and oriented. We can talk about the open space. The site itself is outlined in purple. The, the, uh, what shows up as a, a yellow line is the historic shoreline. So about half of the site actually is historic upland, and so is not subject to Chapter 91. So as the, as the board asked last time, is the open space going to be uh, limited to uh, Harbor Walk along the perimeter? And what's important is to uh, note that the open space is going to be much more than that. You'll see in the crosshatch in white, that's the water-dependent use zone that is regulated by state law. And that is where Harbor Walk is going. But the purpose of focusing you on this purple area is to show that the open space that will be required for the project is the entire site, not just the perimeter along the water. Uh, can we go to the next slides, please? So that was the historic high level, high level line? Is yes, that yes, ma'am. Yes, so the yellow line, there was this, essentially the center of the site where buildings B and C are shown here, uh, buildings A, B, and C, that is historic upland. That was not, uh, it, it's always been dry land. So it is not subject to chapter 91. However, in order to get into the site, the public will have the access along that, uh, what's at the bottom of this slide, the easterly side towards Venezia restaurant. 
and then we'll be able to enter the site. This color-coded one is helpful too to give you the sort of activity areas. The pink that you see is the entry. So there'll be a dedicated pedestrian path coming lined up right with Port Norfolk, open to the public at all times. There are no gates. And also cars will enter in that pink entry. Then the cars, if they wish, can turn left into, you see a red area called Community Ward. I'll get back to that in a minute. The arrival plaza is really the area where the cars uh, can have drop off. And there will be 10 visitor spaces there, again, open to the public. And then uh, they could also enter, if they're, if they're uh, uh, residents or office users, there's a parking garage within building A and a small one within building C. So that's where the arrival plaza uh, uh, distributes the cars. The green area, again, that is Chapter 91 jurisdiction. That is the water dependent use area. And most of that is greened up but it has to be carefully designed in order to deal with sea level rise, be salt water tolerant, and so on. Uh, finally, uh, let's talk about the two wharves. The working wharf, as we call it, is what leads to the marina. So most of the people accessing that will be uh, folks that are members of the marina. There are 75 slips. There will be some transient uh, uh, tie-ups for members of the public. I don't think it's been pinned down how many. That will be subject to the Chapter 91 license. So members, some members of the public would go on the working wharf. The community wharf area, that is meant to be open all the time to all of the general public, voters or not. So for example, it lines up uh, with the, that pink area, the entry experience and the Port Norfolk Street, so people simply can just walk out and enjoy being on the Deposit River. There will be some programming, as described in the, in the letter, uh, in the community wharf area on the, on the land side, the more uh, rectangular area. But that's, uh, that will have to be uh, worked out through community meetings. The idea is to have activities that neighborhood residents and other Bostonians are interested in. Uh, there, there are analogs for this in downtown Boston. Uh, I'm thinking, for example, of, at the Intercontinental Hotel. And that, that will be subject to Chapter 91 uh, uh, Jurisdiction. I, I will just I will just put on the record only because I happen to know that there are issues and intercontinental may not be the best example. Um, so I would suggest that um, you know there must be a way of you guys and I want to put this on the record sure. for making sure that this wharf is accessible to people at all different levels of income. Um, so that it doesn't end up being, um, so that there's, there's a true equity component to this access. Somebody could possibly come down from the Neponset, I don't know, you know, and paddle up um, or, or something like that. So it's not, so it is purely accessible to Boston residents. I, I understood that, Chair. Uh, Yes, one advantage we have here, there was at one time a, a hotel component that was proposed as part of this project five years ago. There isn't any more. I say that's an advantage because what happened with the Intercontinental Hotel is management there uh, were making some members of the public feel that they had to be hotel guests in order to use the public space. And we uh, happily don't have that conflict here. Uh, so I, I understand exactly what you, you're talking about. Um, if we could go forward, uh, I want to take through some more slides. I don't want to. Uh, this is a helpful one to show you areas that are green versus not green. Uh, most of the site today is is impervious. It's basically black topped or covered with with uh, uh, boat sheds. So we will we will be able to improve that quite a bit. As I said earlier, most of the green space is on the northwesterly corner at the top of your screen. And that's where the uh, harbor walk snakes through, as you can see. Uh, next slide, please. This is the public entry that I'm talking about. So you're looking directly north, due north from Port Norfolk Street into the site. That's the existing condition. Keep going. The, the key here in dealing with public access is you have to have visual cues so that the public knows they're welcome. So it may seem like a minor thing, but by by actually painting crosswalks and, and the, the way you design the vegetation and there will be wayfinding, that's how the public knows they're welcome 
are not shut out. I mentioned before there are no gates. That's very important. Gates are a, a, sig a signal to the public that they're not welcome, and they are not proposed or allowed here. If we could keep going. Uh, this shows the vegetation, and it's trying to show how we're accommodating multiple uh, paths. So another way to discourage pedestrians is not to have sidewalks. So there is a pedestrian zone, as it's called here, that's been accounted for to make sure it's not just cars weaving in and out. Uh, if we could please continue. So this is showing you uh, what I have called the pink area. So now we're along the edge of the site itself. Buildings B and C are shown on the left there with the peaked roofs. You see the pedestrian path has vegetation on either side of it uh, so that you don't have to uh, mix with the cars. The, the stanchions that you see with the uh, chain on it, that's a property line uh, that goes to the Venetia. And as I, as I think we've mentioned, we have easement agreements uh, with that owner, and this will all be done in cooperation with them, of course, if we continue. Future slides, let's see. Okay, now we're in the site. This is the retail area. Um, although the Venezia is a, a longstanding uh, uh, public accommodation, there isn't any retail today. So there is this 3,600 square feet. I know it's not a lot of square footage, but that is another way to welcome people in so that there is uh, a destination when they, they walk in that entry area you know, obviously it's not been programmed yet what the retail tenant would be. Most likely it would, it would be something with, with beverage service so that if people are spending time in this open space, they can at least get a soda or a bottle of water and, and so on. But the point is it's not just something, an amenity for the residents alone. It will be open to the general public. That's an important part of our program. Uh, please go ahead. And is this the draft that's been submitted to DEP? Yes, yes, all the, all the drawings are consistent. So the same drawings that you're seeing and renderings are what are submitted to the Commonwealth for MEPA and for the future Chapter 91, that's right. Uh, so this and is the, I'm sorry. Go ahead, sorry, go ahead. And so this is what I, we were calling the arrival port. So now you're looking uh, vaguely westerly towards building, uh, building A, the big mixed-use building. So it's between buildings B and C. Uh, the trick here is, uh, again, you know, with limited width, we don't want a big boulevard and it's private property, but that is open to the public. And that's along that, where you see that white car going, is to the parking garages. But again, there will be 10 public spaces. And it's not Chapter 91 uh, jurisdiction, uh, but I can tell you that they are very interested in visitor parking as well. So it, it's likely to be regulated not just by the city of Boston, but also by uh, Chapter 91 regulators to make sure there are reasonable hours and these spaces are not privatized. If we could keep going, please. Can you please tell us where the bike path is in that image? I yes. Sure. Uh, this is Kevin Dewar, Rody Architects. Um, the uh, bike path would be. Um, Actually, there would be a, um, a different path for bikes that is shown in a different um, slide um, that would, would likely go um, out um, on, a, on a wider path um, so that uh, we could have bikes and vehicles and pedestrians uh, accommodated in different paths. So the big blue line here um, is, a, um, is a pathway. That building C um, in that that previous view showed that the bike room for that building would end there, um, but to sort of bike um, around that, it would be on this blue path, um, which is a much wider accommodation for uh, pedestrians and bicyclists. So to answer the question, if you go back to the previous rendering, the, the bike path is not actually shown. Uh, the, the bike path is on the outside, the water side of building C to the right. It's, it's, uh, they could, of course, walk their bikes on the sidewalk, but there's not a dedicated bike path in this image. Uh, if we could go forward. Okay, so uh, now this is, a, this is an important one to linger on because it shows the, the balance of where you're trying to have visitor parking and open space. 
So if you look to the right-hand uh, corner, lower right-hand corner, you'll see a, a red triangle. That's showing the view shed that this depicts. Obviously, this is a view from the sky, but it's to show this area. Those are planters, and the idea is that the planters are removable. Um, so we, it, it, I guess you could call it flex space. We'd like it, it could be greener than this. This is something that would be worked out in design review, but it's the space between the boathouse and building A, the mixed use uh, a building. And the idea is there may be times where the marina needs additional parking, and so maybe you would remove uh, some of those planters. Uh, uh, there may be times where more visitors, maybe there's an event at that community wharf that we're talking about programming, and you would need to optimize parking. But the idea is that you can put the planters on and off, and this pa these pavers are not necessarily where it's going to end up. We could do more like pervious pavement where it's greener. Uh, okay, so, so the paving that's proposed right now is all pervious? Not all of it, no. Um, th there is a later slide where we show the different materials, Madam okay. Chair. Okay. Uh, if we could go forward, please. This is a view out to the water, uh, just uh, turning to the east. Uh, so just, just to show you what it would feel like for the public. Again, no gates. It's meant to be inviting. Uh, people can, can walk through the entire site. Uh, please go forward. Uh, this is a, a pen and ink drawing to show those two wards I was talking about in relation to the, the Ponset River and the floats. If you could keep going. This is a better, a better view to give you the, uh, a look at it. So the wards that were just shown in the pen and ink are, of course, on the left. So the one with the large yacht-looking vessel, that's the one that will be largely uh, for marina users. But there will be transient tie-ups, as I said. The community area that we are all agreeing needs to be programmed for the general public is shown in sort of light green in a, in a trapezoidal shape uh, to the top center of the picture. And then that wharf uh, that sticks out into the river, the thin one, that's always open to the public. Um, Go ahead. Also, uh, would, would add, um, you know, some of these questions, um, we will make, make it clear that we, we met with the Boston Civic Design Commission uh, five times over the course of uh, the development. Um, the most uh, recent or, or, or latest uh, meetings with them, this pathway was increased um, so that the uh, feeling of, of its width was uh, memorable so that you know that you can, you can always come here and this is a safe path. We've been trying to sort of uh, strike this balance between natural environment um, and there were a lot of comments regarding the plantings uh, with our landscape architects on our team and the landscape architects on this design commission. Um, and part of this is also a, a restored salt marsh, uh, again, to um, create more of a softer edge and um, mix the kinds of uh, um, developments that have occurred on this over time. Um, and uh, this, this message of openness is something um, we actually are not going to have a sign on the, on the building like this. Um, but it's, it's really meant to be a, a, a space that uh, everyone can see, even from 93. This, this view right here um, will be very visible to people coming in. Um, and this, this pathway uh, is meant to accommodate people um, as well as uh, be a natural environment. Um, so let me ask you while you're on the slide, because that was one of my questions was, um, are you proposing then wetland restoration on um, kind of that little green alcove towards the right hand side of the slide of the slide? I'm not sure exactly about the term wetland re uh, restoration that salt marsh restoration is the more uh, specific term that our, our civil engineer and landscape architects uh, have been using. I, I don't quite know the difference on that. I th obviously, with uh, salt marsh, it's more tidal environment. Yeah. But uh, this is a, a zone, and, and obviously Boston's very exposed to the tides. So the uh, idea that this will look different at different times of the uh, tides uh, is something of a, of a design feature, as well as an actual softening 
element here for uh, a wave action, et cetera. Okay, can we uh, move on, please? Yes, thank you. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is showing the seating areas and, and so on at that uh, uh, at the at the edge. We can keep going. We're running short on time. Uh, this is a view from uh, the community wharf, looking back at the buildings. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, you can skip this one. This this is the, the beginning, showing you the materials to show the thought that went into that. Uh, again, the materials are important to signal pedestrian zones versus vehicular zones, but also to deal with uh, sea level rise and resilience. So uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is a helpful one uh, to show the sort of difference, uh, the meandering um, uh, stone dust path is Harbor Walk that we were talking about. Uh, that will be the softest, I guess would be the word to use. And then as you move to the east, which is the bottom, it becomes more hardscape. Uh, next slide, please. This is the sort of study that the engineers have done um, to figure out how this is going to work, exactly what the chairwoman's uh, question were, was about. That top right is the area in question. Next slide, please. More images showing exemplars of, of what will be proposed, and, and there's still a lot more review that has to be done. Uh, Conservation Commission, Chapter 91, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, next slide, please. This is, we thought, an important view because it, it, it's from Tenian Beach, essentially, uh, to show that's already a public area, what the public will see. Again, it's not meant to be a forbidding view. It's meant to be an inviting view. People could be curious about it, turn the corner, come into Port Norfolk and visit. Uh, next slide, please. Now, this was an important question by the board about how the parking is going to work. So if we could linger on this one just a little bit. Uh, so the main paths of travel of the vehicles are shown in red. Um, and we talked about that entry area where there will be uh, visitor parking. The total that I mentioned of 10 is a combination of the six as you come through this necking down area to the arrival port, and then that flex area that we talked about with the movable planters. Um, there will be a change from season to season because, of course, in the winter time, the boathouse will be full of boats. But in the summertime, the boathouse can empty out. That's the top right-hand building. And that there's additional parking possible in the boathouse because there aren't any boats in there. So that's going to open things up where marina patrons can park in the building. And that it opens up more of the surface parking for the public. So uh, let me just ask you a question. Say um, I was a canoeist. Yes. Um, just say. I'm not. but. How would, I, how would I make my way to the community um, wharf? I think um, you would have two I options. Uh, you would have two options, either the, the public pier um, or the commercial pier uh, or the working wharf, as we call it. Um, as, a, as a occasional kayaker, um, I think the, uh, you, you sort of like know that where you can go um, you would probably be more aligned to the public pier, which would be away from some of the larger boats and the faster moving power boats right there. Um, so that, that public pier, which is an extension of Port Norfolk Street, um, would allow for that um, type yeah, of... Yeah, uh, that would be the logical place to put in. But, but to answer the question, say you have a canoe you know, tied to the roof of your car. I'd say there, I, there are two options. If you're by yourself, you would make that left-hand turn and uh, park in the yellow area, mark the six visitor parking spaces, uh, and have to carry your canoe to, the, to that pier to the right. The other, if you have someone with you, those are drop-off areas uh, further in, in between the two yellow areas, so-called arrival court. So you could just have your friend drop you off, and you could carry the, the canoe from there, and then they can park the car somewhere else. Okay. Those would be the two options. Um, next slide, please. 
Uh, the community room, uh, uh, we're working on the, on the programming, but that's not something that we can do unilaterally. There need to be community meetings on that because it's a community room. So for example, as, as detailed in the letter, we have an idea that uh, there is a need uh, during heat waves for cooling centers. Um, this came up during review. Uh, the Boston Centers for Youth and Families has a shortage of these cooling centers where people who don't have air conditioning in their home can essentially take shelter. That's something we want to explore here because the nearest one is over three miles away. But that needs to be talked over with the, with the immediate neighborhood. So it's an idea. It's not something unilaterally we would do. Uh, next slide, please. Can you please, show, can you please show us where this would be in the site plan? Yes, uh, if, um, I, I think if you go forward, we'll be able to find a, a drawing that, yes, here we go. Um, it, it's the building, uh, to the largest building to the top left in building A. The community room is in building A and uh, uh, next to the resilient landscape. Where's the entrance? Um, well, yes, in the, um, this maybe not the best slide, but um, really that, that sort of rectangular space is above um, the um, uh, sort of, I guess, the parking spaces that say 30 office spaces, you could get to that by this lobby, which is open. Um, but but uh, what's more uh, probably drawing people to that space is the fact that there's a landscape deck wrapping that, that entire space. So it will appear as a, as a space that you would want to be in. Um, and uh, you would be sort of drawn to it through that residential lobby and um well which corner next corner, corner though uh, actually yeah, yeah it's hard it's hard to see can is there a yeah. plan that you can try that a blow up plan actually why don't we go to the aerial um which showed that um uh, the aerial with it that we were discussing the the wetland on uh, maybe that's the best place Getting there. Uh, keep going. Uh, so it's, in, it's in building A, correct? Yeah, correct. It's, in, it's in building A, but I want to make sure you know which corner it's on. Um, Go about four more slides back, please. Yeah, here. This one. Uh, that's the landscape deck. Building A from uh, afar or from above would appear to be broken up into two forms uh, so that the podium supports two uh, buildings and structures above it. Uh, so the rectangular building, which is more um, kind of industrial and, and more wharf language, um, would, would have that completely open second floor uh, for these community uses, including the landscape deck. Um, and um, the arrival plaza really kind of connects all the public spaces, including the, the lobby uh, an elevator core, um, which is at the corner and sort of, I guess, um, gives you that, that vision of how you get up to that, that second floor space. So, so, the so it's, in, it's an interior, the community room is an interior program on the second floor. Correct. Of the rectangular building. And is that required by chapter 91? No. No, that, that came as an outgrowth of the large project review with the city, actually. It's not a requirement of Chapter 91. Okay. Um, and this, this project has is, is changed in its um, course of, of the development and obviously eliminating the hotel use. Uh, Rise together, uh, their offices are, um, their construction development firm based in this, in this neighborhood. They would be occupying that building so it's really a mixing place for some of that commercial space which um an office space which uh we feel is is a more um i guess sort of day-to-day -day place where where people would feel like they can come and occupy and use that space and that gallery and, and community space but so in your, in your in your um you have a general professional office use of 36 36,380 gross square footage. Is your 11,600 square feet of community room within that 36,000 gross square yes, footage? Yes, it is, it is. Uh, it's stated as 36,000 for purposes of, of zoning and trip generation, but yep. uh, but the, you're absolutely right. The right, and you're, is, you're, you're categorizing it as office use versus an occupancy of an A3 community hall use. 
Well, I, I, I didn't, uh, I was just speaking to the Boston zoning uh, code. I, you, you're, I, I, I defer to you on the occupancy. I didn't analyze it for the state building code. But you're right, it's probably a different. And, 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 I mean, my, my, only, my only concern is if this is to be a resource for the community, it might be missed by the community because it's so internal and also might be used by the office, by the office tenants. Um, that, that would be my feedback. Like it, it, it doesn't feel like it's for the community in, in terms of its publicness. Well, I, the, uh, there will be a cooperation agreement. Again, it's, it's not going to be subject to Chapter 91 uh, jurisdiction, so it won't be part of that license because the footprint of the building is on historic upland. But the cooperation agreement uh, with the city's uh, uh, BRA, this would be a mandatory element and we would be in default. But I think you, you raise a good point, which is there has to be essentially advertisement. We have to make sure that neighborhood organizations know this room exists. Um, so there has to be outreach to Dorchester organizations. Uh, that's an excellent point. And yeah, just, to, and just to make, and just to, this is an excellent error of you, just to entertain it and put it out there. It would make sense for it to be close to the public boardwalk, right where that green space is. Right, well, it, uh, okay. Yeah, just, I, just recommendations. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, part of it is going to also depend on your programming because, you know, there's some some models out there where the programming really does attract um, the activity that one would want in these community spaces. Uh, but please go ahead and, um, and thank you for the detailed presentation. We should wrap up soon. I, I, we're, we're essentially finished. We can flip through the rest of the slides, but uh, I think we... We're, we're, we're complete. And that, that community space, um, you know, and, and some of the needs are these workspaces where multiple people can come and, and um, um, so I think that it's proximity to office space uh, is a way of, again, sort of mixing the, those uses that um, this community and the future community um, will, will utilize. Yeah, and, and Madam Chair, if I may, um, you know, RISE wants to occupy this office building. Um, we want to be here. We're currently in the community and want to stay in the community and we'll be operating and managing this community space as well. So um, we, we plan to make sure that this is open for the community to use. Um, we will more than likely be working through the cooperation agreement on how things are scheduled in this space, um, how people have access to it, advertisement, things of that nature. Um, so uh, we, we look forward to that and, and look forward to staying in the community as well. Excellent. Um, any other questions from the board or any other thoughts from the board? If, if you can tell, I have one last question, which is uh, in terms of your total gross square footage of the yes. uh, project, how much is it to residential square footage? And then how much is it to allocate to retail, retail or restaurant? Uh, it's the grand total of gross square area is about 203,000 square feet to round. The multifamily dwelling, which is the 120 units, is about 109,000. Uh, we already spoke about the general office. The retail is only 3,600, 3,600. Um, 22,000 is so-called waterfront service. That's what you have to qualify the, the boat, the boathouse as. Um, the parking garage is also counted because it's a shared parking garage and that area is 31,000. Okay, so my other comment is just the proportion of retail anchor type of space to then the residents of the community it just proportionally is there's a huge gap you, you mean it's uh, too small yes three thousand to hundred thousand plus of square footage for residential I, I this this the project in terms of the aesthetics it's a it's, it's great it wants to be a neighborhood it wants to be a community resource so I'm just kind of commenting on anchor programs that can support your project can, yeah. can be enhanced. Understood. And, and, we, we, and location too, so it doesn't 
it, you know, I love the partnership with Boston Center for Youth and Family. But in that, if it was to be a cooling center, it makes sense again that it's closer to where there's public, in public view, not necessarily inside an office building. Understood. Yep. Well, okay. Too. Well, thank you so much for your presentation. Thank and you. thank you. Thank you for members of the public who are still watching this. Thank you for your interest because I do think that um, this gives us as the board uh, a, a clearer picture on how um, how this how the construction works with the open space and the soft edges and makes the project more welcoming to the community. Thank you very much for having us. So thank you, thank you everybody. The, 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 thank thank you, you. the meeting is the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you.